Happy Thursday, everybody, and welcome to Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 700 and... And se seven, 700 and... Seven hundred and fourteen. I've got quite the story for you. Hope you're all uh, doing well, and I'm glad you made it here. I'm so thrilled to see each and every one of you. We're going to be having some fun today. We are playing a new game called My Friendly Neighborhood. I know that uh, some of you were really uh, eager for me to play Dead Space 3, and I was thinking about it. I did a bunch of uh, research on Dead Space 3 this week, and I read a ton of reviews, and the overwhelming consensus is that it's a huge disappointment, and the primary thing that is disappointing about it is the story. Um, I enjoyed the Dead Space gameplay. They made some changes to the Dead Space gameplay in Dead Space 2, or I'm sorry, in Dead Space 3 that were not very popular. Uh, but there were other quality of life improvements as well. But I really wanted to play Dead Space 3 for the story. And if it's just bad, I don't know if I want to waste my time. So I'm not completely writing off Dead Space 3. Maybe we'll do it again in the future at some point. But I really wanted to play this game that we're playing today, My Friendly Neighborhood, just because it looked really fun. It looks like a fun game, and I think we're all going to have a blast. At any rate, that's the plan for today, and I'm live on Facebook and, and YouTube. Good to see everybody on Facebook today, and of course, great to see all of the regulars and the members and the Patreon supporters on YouTube today. Changed one, just Cowboy, Julian Z, Hellcat, Sarah, Retro Wave, Chininator, uh, Canuck82, and 444, Just Cowboy, McDonald's Worker, Meat Potato, and it's Dalton Williams with the first super chat of the day today saying... Glad to be here for this Scotch and Smoke Rings. How was your week going? Also, have you heard about the Red Dead Redemption 1 remaster? My week is going well. I captured a lot of footage. I'm making progress, significant progress, towards getting everything I need done so that I can begin the next section of my lore series. Remaster. Ten hours ago... Rockstar Games just dropped huge Red Dead Redemption 1 remaster clue. While the developer has remained mum on the rumors, even as reporter Colin uh, Moriarty claimed that the game would be coming and the South Korean ratings board updated RDR with a new age rating, blah, 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 blah. On July 27th, fans spotted an update to the Rockstar Games website along with a new reference in the game's list that has players convinced the announcement is imminent. Okay. Well, uh, pretty cool. I hope that these rumors are true and that we get a remaster pretty soon. I am excited. Sam S. Wolf114 with a super chat says, Hello, Ox. It's been a while. It's good to be able to catch your live broadcast, though I will be watching it while I'm at work. How have you been? I've been well. I've been keeping really busy. So you may notice that the numbers are back on my episodes. That's right. This is Scotch and Smoke Rings episode 714 instead of just Scotch and Smoke Rings. And there's a bit of a story there. So you guys have been asking for the numbers every week which was perplexing to me because I didn't really think you guys cared about the numbering system for Scotch and Smoke Rings, but you have been asking for them. Additionally, YouTube has been pestering me to organize my show into podcasts. Podcasts, is, it's the new big thing that YouTube has released a couple months ago, and really the only pr uh, program that I have that fits into the podcast category at, at all is Scotch and Smoke Rings. So uh, they wanted me to put that as a playlist, and I've been putting it off and putting it off because it's a lot of work. And I figured, well, okay, if I'm going to be going through and adding the episode numbers to all of the episodes that don't have an episode number, I might as well at the same time turn previous episodes into a podcast. And so that's what I spent the day, literally the entire day, doing, which is this is the reason why I've been avoiding it and postponing it. Because I could have been shooting footage today or working on a new video, but no, I sacrificed the entire day just organizing <laughs> previous episodes of Scotch and Smoke Rings on YouTube. Now, um, 
Linda, a, a viewer, a very kind viewer, sent me an email with a carefully uh, noted listing of every single episode that was missing a number. Uh, so many thanks to Linda for sending her, uh, that my way. But as I was in the middle of organizing everything, I discovered that I made a mistake to the, num the numbering system of my own episodes over a year ago. Long before I stopped putting the episode number into my episodes. Uh, I, you know, I, I had been organizing my episodes of Scotch and Smoke Rings into seasons. I started all the way back at the very beginning. I think the first season was in 2008. And uh, I, I did it year after year after year until 2013, 20, no, what was it, 2017, something like that. And then I stopped for some reason. I just... I didn't know why I was doing it anymore. I stopped. So all of the episodes of Scotch and Smoke Rings after that weren't organized into seasons. They were just out there. So I went way back in time to like 2016, 2017 and started organizing every episode into its own podcast playlist that has a season organized by year. And while I was doing that, I was just verifying that all the numbers were adding up. Episode, you know, 512, 513, 514. As I was going through... I noticed that on one, I duplicated the, the episode number. It went from like 544 to 544. And I, I watched the beginning of each episode just to make sure that they were new episodes and it wasn't like the same episode cut into two or something. And no, it, I had just made a mistake. So I had to advance the, the, the episode. But of course, that means that every episode after that one was misnumbered. So I had to change the title of every single episode after that one to catch the mistake. But then I found that mistake happened six more times. That's right. We're on, we're on episode 714. I found this mistake at like episode 540 or something. So hundreds of episodes were misnumbered, which sadly means that Linda, all of the kind work that you went into numbering the episodes that didn't have any numbers was out of date. <laughs> it was messed up and I have only myself to blame. You know what else it means? It means that episode 666 Remember the big episode I did where, you know, Satan came and visited and you know, the whole Dino Nuggies thing? Yeah, that was actually episode, uh, like, 680-something or something. <laughs> I forget what it was. It was, like, 672 or something like that was the actual... That was the episode. So if you go back and rewatch episode 666, it's now labeled episode 672, which means that future viewers are going to be really confused when they get to that episode. If they're watching chrono you know, chronologically, they're going to be like, well, this is episode 672. Why is he making such a big deal about episode 666? Well, that's why. If you're going back in time and watching, it's because I messed up with the numbers and I actually did it really late. But anyway, I'm pretty confident because I've spent my entire day doing this that we're actually on episode 714. I went through every episode. I looked at the title. I changed them when necessary. I've got all past episodes organized into seasons, and you can access them now very easily from the podcasts tab of my channel. So you can just go to the podcast section, scroll down, and there you go. Everything is organized. Okay. Tony, good to see you on Facebook. Toby, good to see you on Facebook as well. Uh, JW Beekeeping says, Hey, Ox, finally able to catch you live. How are you today? Excited for today's show. Thank you, JW Beekeeping. I'm feeling really good. Feeling really good. Got my rum and my scotch and my cigars. And what else do I need to enjoy my evening? Not much. Julian Z says, good evening, Ox. So good to see you on this Scotch and Smoke Rings. Hope you're well. What drew you to this game? What is it about? It's about, um, well, imagine a dark Sesame Street is the best way that I can describe it. It's kind of like Muppets that want to murder you. I think it sounds fun, so we're going to be tackling that. It has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a good time. Rail Withers, a member for 37 months, and a Silver Rocks says, Good evening, Ox and Shant. Good evening, Rail Withers. Good to see you, my friend. Rachel says, I am proud to report that I have found the timestamp for when you crashed a Fallout 76 server with mannequins. Part 21 at 1 hour and 24 minutes into the broadcast. Oh, my God. 
You found it. <laughs> Rachel, all right. Well, um, if my amazing and talented editor is watching right now and she's looking for new content for upcoming shorts, that would be my live streams of Fallout 76, episode 21, at the one hour and 24 marker into the episode. That's when I, I, I break the entire server by hitting a mannequin with a machete, I think it was. That was a lot of fun. Thank you for that one, Rachel. Isaac, a member for six months, and a silver ox says, oh shoot, can't believe it's up to six months. Huge thanks to this great community for their generosity, and huge thanks to you, Ox, for all the good you do. Well, thank you, Isaac. This community is extremely generous. We learn that every year during my Christmas charity live streams, you guys come in with your pockets full and you donate to St. Jude's for charity, and it's, it's always humbling and truly amazing that this community is able to be so generous. So, you're in the best place possible tonight. Robert Tabora says, have you ever played a Japanese RPG game? Uh, I have, when I was younger and inexperienced, and you know, my taste had yet to mature. No, I kid, I kid, if you're into JRPGs, I am totally not shaming you. I am totally not talking about the inexplicity of of, you know, Cloud Strife having spiky hair that points towards the heavens it, it, while fighting and flying through the air just, just with a giant sword called it's twice his size and he can hold it up with one hand. Like, what's it called? Cloud Breaker or something like that? No, I, <clears throat> listen, listen. I Fantasy is great. We all have wonderful uh, fantasies and uh, those JRPG fantasies are, are, I'm sure they have a place in this world. It's just not, a, not here. Just... Elsewhere, but here is is where I think JRPGs should go. That's all I'm saying. I have played them. I played Final Fantasy VII a lot. It was what introduced me to RPG games. Loved the whole materia thing. It was a lot of fun. I haven't played very many since then. Julian Z says, Ox, so episode 666 is not 666. It's sad. I know. I Imagine how I feel. I was going through it, and I did all this great build up and I made the special so fun it turns out I was already late and I didn't realize that episode 666 is not 666 it's 672 should have been able to predict it steel 101 <laughs> I'm sorry how sad you guys are about that <laughs> steel 101 a member for seven months in a silver ox says ox I saw some bizarre texts from fans they said the legion is morally gray. What? Dude, they're the most brutal and evil faction in the franchise. Oh, I thought you were building up for a joke there, like a dad joke. But no, you found some real people who said that the Legion was morally gray? <laughs> uh, I've learned one thing. If there's anything that I've learned um, since joining the Fallout community and covering these amazing games is that there are certain players who will go to any length to defend the Legion. What is clearly evil, probably the most blatantly evil faction in the entire Fallout universe, there will still be someone that says, yeah, but in a post-apocalypse, what's morality anyway? Hmm? So, <laughs> that, that, there's a lot of reasons for that that I'm not going to go into. It's the style of the Legion. It's the charismatic... Um, personality that leads the legion in the form of caesar it's the writing the amazing writing that goes into the legion and of course it's um how well the writers were able to depict an alternate philosophy that is clearly de deranged and it's a cautionary tale to all of us about how easy it is that for people to be swayed by clearly deranged ideologies presented in a pretty silver bow Steel 101 says, uh, no, I, I saw Steel 101's, thank you so much. It's Irvin Chadwick, a member for 37 months and a silver ox who says, Happy Thursday, Oxhorn. How detailed is your playthrough going to be with Starfield? I know you generally only play through a game once on, st on st a stream. My playthrough... Um, my playthrough, um, 
My playthrough will be uh, not as detailed as the lore videos. So uh, at the moment, my intention is, of course, to do lore videos for Starfield as well as to stream it live. Um, now, if you watched my Wastelander and Fallout 76 live streams, I was really detailed and I went through all of the nooks and crannies and really tried to explore the universe. But even then, I missed things. And in my lore videos, I went even deeper. Be right back. Hold on. Sorry about that, everybody. I heard uh, a voice outside my window, and it was probably just the neighbors hollering. For a minute there, I thought maybe one of my dogs had gotten in trouble. But no, my dogs are being watched in another room, and they're fine. So I just wanted to step outside and double check. So yeah, uh, in terms of my Starfield playthrough, my intention is to be thoroughly thorough uh, in both my live streams and my lore videos. KT says, hey, Ox and chat, happy scotch and smoke rings to everyone and happy birthday to me. Hey, happy birthday, KT. So good to see you on this scotch and smoke rings Thursday. Glad you're here. And thanks for celebrating your birthday with us. Logan7382, a gold ox. Thank you so much, Logan, for becoming a gold ox. And it's Isaac who gifts the first gifted memberships of the day. Thank you so much, Isaac, for gifting five memberships to the community. And congratulations to Duck, isn't it? Alexis, Emperor Cleon, AI Snow, and Knightly Phoenix for snagging those free Oxhorn memberships. Age Khan, or I'm sorry, Angie Khan became a bronze ox. Thank you, Angie Khan. Marine98 says, did you find out what happened yesterday with your computer? No, I, I still have no idea. Clearly my computer's fine because here I am and we're gonna be playing a game in a minute and I tested the game before I went live to make sure it worked on my computer and everything's fine. So I don't know. I mean, weird things like this occasionally happen. If you recall during my live streams of Half-Life Alex, there was this one point in the game that I couldn't pass through. I, I crashed at every, every time I reached that one point in the game and I couldn't get past it. And there was nothing I could do. And so I never finished my broadcast of um, Half-Life Alex. And it was another one of those situations where I didn't see very many people online complaining about that particular issue. And yet since then, how many games have we played? How many new games have we played? How many remakes of old games were launched this year that we've played with no problems whatsoever? So it's hard for me to say that it's just my graphics card or it's just my computer when my computer and graphics card are able to play all sorts of brand new games flawlessly. But every now and then we find this one game that has this one section that causes me to crash. And that's what happened during my broadcast yesterday. And I haven't uh, resolved it yet. So I'm going to be spending some time later this week and uh, this weekend trying to fix that issue. And uh, if I can't, I don't know what we'll do. Uroar, a member for 12 months and a bronze ox, says, Cheers, buddy. Bring on the Muppets. Cheers, my friend. It's going to be fun. I don't know if you can hear that's just a ton of commotion out my window today. No idea what's going on. Mr. Master Chief 1594 says to Wax, thanks for taking my request. <laughs> You're welcome, Mr. Master Chief. Like I said, I, I keep a, a, a list of all of the games you guys recommend to me, and then I go through them when it's time to pick a new one, and I'll, I'll choose a game that I think sounds like the most fun. The Easy Life says, Good evening, Ox. Hope you and yours are doing well. Listening to your Chance the Con video makes me want an audiobook recorded by you. You have the perfect voice to keep people listening. Cheers. Thank you, The Easy Life. Um, I had so much fun putting that together. I felt like I was animating a comic book, which is essentially what I was doing. And uh, what if you don't know which, what, I'm, what he's referring to is in the special edition of Fallout New Vegas, they actually released 
a, a comic book, it was more of a graphic novel, that depicted the events that happened just before Benny kidnaps the courier and uh, shoots him in the head. It talks about Benny talking with the cons, negotiating with them, and then, of course, intercepting Courier 6. So that entire story is, is depicted in graphic detail, and it's a fascinating story, and I did a lore video on it by essentially using material from the graphic novel with my narration overlay. I'd love to see more of that in the Fallout universe. That was so much fun. Elena Rosas, a member for two months under Silver Ox, says, Hi Ox, love your content. Could you give a shout out to my Edgar? Sure, Elena has an Edgar. It's her Edgar, not your Edgar. And here's a shout out to Elena's Edgar. Hey Edgar, so glad you, uh, you and Elena are here on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. Danger Jim, a member for 42 months and a Silver Ox, says, Ox, episode 666, not being the 666, only improves the evilness. Well played, sir. That's right. It was intentional is what that was. It, it, it's such an evil episode that not even the number can stand to be there. For some reason. It's, it's just awful. It's full of deceit is what it is because lying is evil and the title is now a lie so it's right it was on purpose thank you for noticing danger jim julian z says uh, it's okay ox i understand completely a co-worker is trying to get me to play jrpgs specifically persona 4 but i just don't get it even if i do enjoy some anime there's just something about JRPGs. <laughs> I don't know if uh, I'm rubbing off on you or if uh, <laughs> if you were like this way before before you met me, but um, there is something about JRPGs, right? It's hard to quantify, and I'm not going to sit here and try to because people will say I'm projecting or I'm you know being judgmental or being overly critical or something, but just something something about jrpgs that doesn't always sit right with me i'll tell you what it is it's 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 a number of things but almost how many jrpgs are there where your your character is the quiet brooding guy who doesn't have much to say but he's always really quiet and when he does speak he's serious he doesn't have a sense of humor he doesn't know snark or sarcasm his entire personality is being quiet and then being serious when he's not being quiet. Uh, and um, there's only so many games you can play like that with a hero like that that uh, before you start to get a little bored. Cannabis Ewer says, Good evening, Ox. Hope you and the family are having a good week. I'm looking forward to tonight's game. Thank you, Cannabis Ewer. So am I. Rachel says, Also, also uh, Fallout 76 launch day part two, two hours, 19 minutes in, is when you say you will... Drill someone's cavity with the new drill weapon? <sighs> you know, people have a lot of role-playing ideas, and apparently mine at that moment was to role-play a dentist. I, th I think I remember the moment you're talking about. In, in uh, my Fallout 76 live streams, in part two, at the two hour and 19 minute seg segment, I discovered that you could actually pick up a power drill and use it as a weapon, right? Uh, very similar to a ripper, but instead of going like this, it was going like that. And you can use the, ri the, the weapons, and apparently I made a drilling the cavity joke with it. So there's always that if you ever want to put that as a short. I'm just not, not that I'm saying you should. It's just a possibility. Thank you for that, Rachel. Hellcat, a member for 10 months and a silver ox, says, Got a dad joke for you, ox. It's illegal to laugh out loud in Hawaii. You must keep it to aloha. Been sitting on that all week, he says, and that's the perfect time for booze. Hey, everybody, it's Scotch time. This is some 15-year-old Glenn Fiddick cheers. I'm sorry, did I say Glenn Fiddick? It's Glenn Livett. And this is just some crack and rum cheers. Time to set things on fire. <laughs> T 
Tony Gones says, uh, here's some dad jokes. What's it called when a snowman throws a tantrum? A meltdown. Thank you, Tony. Snowman throwing a tantrum. That's a meltdown right there. Steel 101 says, also, are you playing Dead Space 3 after this game? I don't know. I'm kind of turned off by Dead Space 3 at the moment based on the reviews that I've read. That said, it's hard to judge a book by its cover. It's possible that those reviews were overly critical and that it's an amazing game. But uh, any anytime, like, I went through all of the bad reviews and it's like over and over and over again, the primary thing that the reviews criticized was the story. And it just seems to me that of all of the games for you to drop the ball on the story, Dead Space is just a tragedy, right? Because the story was so good in the first game and it was um, it was in many ways improved upon and made better in the second game. Or at least the second game didn't make it any worse. It was just as good as the first game. For the third game to come along and just drop the ball on the story it would be such a shame that I just don't know if I have it in me to cover that at the moment. Now again, I haven't played it so I don't know for sure and maybe I'm just judging a book by the reviews and I shouldn't be doing that. So um, I'm saying, I'm putting a pin in that for now. We're going to do other stuff for the moment. Maybe we'll come back to Dead Space 3. Man of Warb says, I never could take the Legion seriously as a primary villain faction. They were only effective because the NCR overstretched themselves. I saw Father Elijah as being a more dangerous villain. Um, Father Elijah was certainly a dangerous uh, character, and he could have potentially... Uh, been such a dangerous villain had he gotten his way. That said, he was also full of hubris, and he's not got a strong history of success. Remember, he's the reason the Brotherhood lost it. Uh, Helios won. Right? And I think this is a recurring theme. We've got all of these non-NCR factions in the game talking about which non-NCR faction is really the most powerful all of whom have lost to the NCR the Legion has already lost to the NCR the Brotherhood again already lost to the NCR and we're gonna argue that really really the NCR is so weak because they're overstretched and they've got all this corruption and all these other factions are really the more powerful factions that have already lost to the NCR um, so it's possible that had he gotten his way at the Sierra Madre, Father Elijah could have found what he needed to really take over the entire um, Mojave, especially if he allowed that, that poisonous gas to escape, the one that turned all of those people into ghosts, the ghost creatures. He could have wrought a great deal of destruction, so it's a good thing that we stopped him. Um, uh, but yeah, the Legion is kind of hard to take seriously. I mean, not only are they running around in skirts, but uh, they're making choices that are inhuman and unrealistic and making enemies every every step they take. KT gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, KT. And congratulations to the Reverend Coyote Coffee Addict, that guy in the kilt detailing Snowman 3 and Christopher Lowe. Awesome generosity. Thank you so much, KT. Marine98 says, is it just me or did you have a black derby hat in your older videos or was it just your camera? Um, it was just my camera. This is the derby I've always had. I will say, however, that the first hat I ever wore when I appeared on camera, when I first appeared on camera, was a black top hat. It was a short top hat, and uh, I never actually did a broadcast while wearing it, but in some of the earlier um, machinima videos I made for World of Warcraft, I appeared on camera wearing the top hat. But I quickly transitioned into the derby just because, because I think it suits my head shape better. Than the top hat did and I've worn it ever since this is the same hat like I haven't even changed it or washed it yeah that's I, I'm not gonna show you what's inside because I've been doing the show for a long time that's you know 15 years of build up so we won't go ahead and take the hat off but yeah it is the same hat
Greg says, Mr. Virus can't be here today, but he says hi, and he loves everyone. Thank you, Greg, for delivering the message. And we miss you, Mr. Virus, but uh, I know we'll see you again very soon. I hope you have a wonderful day. Julian Z says, I never noticed that in JRPGs, but now that you mentioned it, yeah, that's pretty common. Also, did you look into the Dead Space 2 DLC you missed? Uh, not yet, but uh, based on what we learned in my last broadcast, that it wasn't necessarily essential to the overarching plot, I think we might give it a miss for now. But who knows? Maybe I'll go back to it. Chininator says the Lego store is having a sale. People are lined up for blocks. That is technically accurate in a variety of ways. Thank you, Chininator. And Steel 101 says, I've played Dead Space 3 multiple times, and truth be told, the critics were very overcritical of the game at the time. It's not perfect, but still pretty great. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I mean, some of the reviews that I read were not of the time. They were modern. They were current reviews. Like, the game came out in, what was it, 2013 something? So it's been a decade, and some of the reviews that I, I read were Steam reviews that came out last month. So, is it? I also realize that sometimes on Steam, people can just f hop on the negative bandwagon and follow it all the way to the station, right? And yeah, the, the re really the only way that I'm ever going to be able to know for sure is to play it. And maybe I will, but I wasn't in the mood for that today. So we'll see. Alex Hughes became a bronze ox. Thank you so much, Alex Hughes. Angie Khan says, Angie, short for Angelica, not Angie. Hugs, okay. Um, so it's A-N-G-E, not A-N-G-I-E. All right, so I'm not supposed to pronounce it A-N-G-I-E. I guess I'm supposed to pronounce it Ange. It's short for Angelica, and You'd think Angie would be short for Angelica. Not Onge. Hello, Onge. So glad you made it to the broadcast. Or maybe Ange? Is Ange short for Angelica? I wouldn't know because I don't have the name. If, if you are Angelica, <clears throat> you would know better than me. Have people just called you, called you Ange your entire life? And not Angie? You would think they would call you Angie. Or Ange. But Ange? Okay. I'll try Ange from now on. Thank you, Ange Khan, for the correction there. Aurora Brewer says, Ange like flange? Yeah, that's... Ange like flange is short for Angelica, like flangelica, I, I guess. Adam M., a member for 14 months in a bronze lock, says, if a legion shooter... If a legion shoots a gun, does he get kicked out? I mean, clearly not, because despite everything they say, they still use guns. When you're harassed while wandering the wasteland by legion patrols, they come at you with 9mm submachine guns. They're not afraid of using guns. Why they don't have snipers is beyond me. If the entire principled point is that they don't use weapons or high technology because the stuff isn't made from flesh and bone and fragile stuff, and they need to be reminded that life is fragile, this entire weird reasoning that Caesar lays out for why they don't use weapons, and then you find them using weapons, it doesn't make sense. Why would you be okay with using 9mm submachine guns in the Mojave, but not sniper rifles? If your entire premise is that it's cowardice to use weapons, but then you use them yourself. But you just don't use sniper rifles. Sniper rifles, the one thing that caused you to lose the war to begin with 10 years ago or however long it was that they first attacked the dam. Like, the entire thing is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The Legion does not make sense. Jeff Day, a member for 12 months, says, 12 months, how time flies. Thanks for the great, or for the year of great content. Cheers, sir. Jeff, I, I'm thrilled you've been here for a year. That silver derby looks amazing on you, and I'm glad you're back for more. Cheers, my friend. Mr. Bear, a member for 10 months, and his silver ox says, what do you get when you cross a frog and a pig? A lifetime ban from the Muppet Show studio. 
I mean, they're the ones who came up with that tidbit of canonical lore. A frog dating a pig? That wasn't our fault. That was theirs. They came up with the idea. Kunk says, if there are any Fallout Easter eggs in Starfield, which would you like to see? Zetons? Mr. Pebbles, the first cat in space? Jangles the Moon Monkey? Nuka Girl? Or of course, the Enclave in space? I think it was Tony J who sent me this on Twitter, but uh, I want to see, I want to see the, the Repcon ghouls in space, right? Remember? During that quest, during Fallout New Vegas, we go to the Repcon headquarters and there's that little cult of ghouls that want to hop on a spaceship and go to space. I want to see them in space. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Uh, Junk41 says, Hey Ox, it's my girlfriend's first time watching one of your live streams. Her name is Destiny and she loves your channel. Could you give her a shout out and one of your famous smoke rings? Yeah, I can do that. Uh, shout out to Destiny and uh, Junk41. Good to have you on the pro program today. All right, we're going to do a smoke ring where I can get your free light. That guy in the kilt detailing says, ooh, what if you could run across Jason Bright and his fellow ghouls? Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't that be great? Here we go. Okay, I've got a fan. I've got a fan. I'm going to turn off the fan. Hold on. There's just a lot of wind motion going on right now. It's, called, it's interrupting my smoke rings. Loot Goblin says, For the Legion using guns in the Battle for Hoover Dam, you can loot anti-material rifles from the elite Legionnaires. Yeah, so there is also an argument to be made that we can't take l lore impl uh, impl implications. We can't make lore deductions from... Gameplay mechanics is what I was trying to say. That is to say, it's, it's the whole finding Jet in a pre-war container, right? Canonically, Jet was created by Myron after the apocalypse on the West Coast. Canonically, that's the answer. The problem is that when we find Jet in pre-war locations and in pre-war containers, we obviously have a conundrum because Myron couldn't have invented something that we find in a closed room that's been closed since before Myron was born, right? And yet, it's a, the, the reason why we find it in a container is clear. Because looting is part of the game. And looting chems is part of the game. And every container where we should be able to find uh, any kind of randomly generated piece of loot, chems should be allowed to be there as well. We also have the actual practical problem of people who made it, who made up the story of the world are not necessarily the exact same people who are creating each of the different levels or coding the loot tables of the legionnaires, right? And I realized that maybe a company of Bethesda's side shouldn't be forgiven for making mistakes like that, right? A, a company of that size with that, that many resources and with a game that's as big as it is shouldn't make simple mistakes like that. So therefore, we should be able to take um, game mechanics and interpret lore from them. And there's an argument to be made there. Maybe that's true. But um, I think from a story perspective, Fallout New Vegas makes it abundantly clear that the Legion doesn't use guns. I, why they also made it so that in the game, the Legion does use guns? Um, why they didn't decide that that shouldn't exist? I don't know. I don't know. It was it an oversight? Maybe. Whose fault is it? Is it Obsidian's or is it Bethesda's? Well, Obsidian did it, but then Bethesda gave them the deadline for getting the game done, and it was really short. So who's to? I, mean, I don't want to get into that. I don't even care. Uh, I think that uh, we're just going to have to believe, <laughs> even though our eyes tell us otherwise, that the Legion doesn't use guns. What's even weirder though is that if you go to the Legionary safe houses, you find guns. 
And those had to be hand-placed. It's not just random loot inventories or boxes filled with loot. If you go to the legionary safe houses, you find more than melee weapons. You find high-powered and, you know, uh, technological weapons in the safe houses. So I don't know at this point. I just, it's annoying. The entire thing is just annoying. Uh, throwing stream says, hi, Ox, do you think you'll ever play Dying Light? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. We'll see. But you know what? I got some smoke rings to blow here. Hold on. It helps when there's not a breeze, but there's still a little bit of a breeze in here. Well, they weren't perfect, but at least they were there. Ah, bonked my knee. Ugh, funny bone. Nick says, maybe legionaries opt to use guns when they're out of sight of Kenturians or Kaiser. Just a thought. I mean, yeah, at this point, we have to just use any way of explaining it that we can. Rachel says, what do cannibals do to freshen their breath? Mentos. Mentos. Cannibals to freshen Mentos. Gross. Gross. And not just because of Mentos, but also because of Toe Jam. I mean, it's just, they wouldn't freshen your breath. Just, but they are cannibals. Maybe compared to cannibal breath, Mento Jam breath would be better. Sporker Fowl. Uh, foul. Sporker Fa says, Hey Ox, I love your content. Now that you have made somewhat all lore videos about every Fallout quest, what will you do next? Probably Starfield, but I'm, I'm not quite done. I still have some Fallout content to go, so, but probably Starfield. Marine98 says, uh, Caesar also has the Displacer Glove, which is tech. Again, yeah, his entire uh, thing is about technology. It's not just guns. I think the thing is that he explains away the displacer glove because it's it's melee. It's still a melee weapon. It's kind of like wearing brass knuckles, right? But he doesn't end at guns. He doesn't just stop at guns. He talks all about technology. Like, he even talks about not using Mr. House's Securitron robots out of principle because they're technology. Even if one of his legionaries happens to see a Securitron, Caesar's response is to kill that centurion because he saw advanced technology. He wants to keep his troops ignorant of advanced technology. I guess it's better for them to be confronted by advanced technology for the first time on the battlefield where they might meet the centur a, a, a sentry robot. Right? Again, it's just ridiculous. Mark from Sales says, when, when is the best time to buy a bird? When they're cheap. Cheap, cheap. Oh, that's a good one, Mark from Sales. Thank you for that one. And then Man of Warb says, uh, controversial question here. Do you think it would have been better to explain Joshua Graham's initial affinity for the Legion had he been Roman Catholic instead of LDS? I mean, uh, really, what is it about being a Roman Catholic that would have made you more attuned to the Legion? Using Latin, really. I mean, maybe, I guess. But how many, how many Catholics grow up learning Latin these days? I know that it used to be much more common, you know, decades ago, generations ago, when you were taught Latin in primary school. But nobody's really taught Latin in school these days. Um, even if you go to Catholic school, it's it's unlikely that you're going to be taught Latin. So, I don't know. Um, I think 
what's the the entire point is that um, Edward Sallow and Joshua Graham were highly educated, not necessarily about science, but about history. And it was through their education on history that they got, you know, from their religious upbringing and also because of their work with the followers of the apocalypse that they were exposed to the Roman legion, through, uh, that they were exposed to Roman history. Now, of course, the Roman, uh, the great Roman empire tr transformed into Roman Catholicism um, much later throughout human history. But I don't think that connection is ever really made by Caesar or that it's really all that important. Um, I think his faith, his LDS faith, had very little to do with him turning into the tyrant that he eventually became. I think he, um, you know, what it might be is that uh, he was not exposed to the realities of the wasteland until he went on mission, uh, perhaps because he was raised in Utah and because of, uh, because of his upbringing there. Because it was after he went on mission and then was kidnapped by raiders, it was after that that he began to realize what the world was really like, and then in his mind he thought, well, in order to survive, I've got to dispense with this religious upbringing, upbringing that I had, and I need to become something else. And that's when his education that he received from the followers of the Apocalypse reminded him of the history of the Roman Empire and how grandiose and great that was compared to what he was seeing with all of these raiders everywhere else. Here he was, this highly educated guy being kidnapped by raiders who barely knew what, um, you know, bacteria was, right? And he was able to give them basic, what he thought was very basic instructions in order to improve their lives. So much had been lost that these raiders who were in the process of ruining his life were, were simpletons compared to him and what he thought was very basic education. And so if uh, his faith didn't prepare him for that, facing that reality, he's going to look into history and find something that maybe he could point to to see, well, this is what we need to become again. And for him, apparently, that was the Roman Legion. So I'm not sure exactly that there's much of a connection to be made to Catholicism or LDS uh, when it comes to uh, Caesar's choice to <laughs> essentially become Caesar. Carpy became a silver ox. Thank you so much, Carpy. Uh, Junk41 says, thanks for the shout out, Ox. You made her night. By the way, we finished your Amnesia series and noticed you didn't play Amnesia, a machine for pigs. How come? What? Oh, I didn't even know this was a game. Amnesia, a machine for pigs. Uh, published in September of 2013, mixed reviews. So it came after Dark Descent. Um, well, this is my first time hearing about it. So tell you what, I'll take a look at it after the broadcast and see if it's something we want to do. Cliff Sainz, a member for 36 months. And a bronze ox says, let us raise a drink to the legend ox. Well, that's very kind. I can't raise a drink to myself. So instead, let's raise a drink to... Everyone who contributed to my charity live streams and the fact that you keep coming back week after week. Cheers. Throwing Stream says, with a very generous super, super chat, thank you so much, Throwing Stream. He says, I ask about Dying Light because, and I may be wrong about this, but I vaguely remember you talking about Dying Light 2. In my opinion, you should skip it and just play the first one. It's my favorite game, and I love to watch you play. Keep up the great work. Well, I, uh, I think I talked about Dying Light 2 very briefly because people were recommending it to me, especially right as the game was coming out. And so I was uh, tempted to play it. Ultimately, I decided against it. I'm not sure why. I'd have to take a look at it again. Maybe I thought it was too like some of the other stuff that I was playing. I don't know. But we'll see. I'll have to take a look at it again. Andrew Jameson says, What cigar are you smoking? Now, Ox, I am smoking The Brick. It's a box-pressed cigar, and uh, it's got a really silky wrapper. I enjoy it.
I am G Snap with a Muppet joke <clears throat> says, what do you get when you buy 13 identical Muppets? A beaker's dozen because of beaker from the Muppets. I guess. Thank you, IMG Snap. Love it. Ryan Two Gamer says, "I agree. Machine for Pigs was even better than the Dark Descent. Cool. I'm gonna have to check it out." McChazter, a member for eight months into Silverox, says, "Well, Ox, all I'm gonna say on the topic of friendly neighbors is don't be afraid." They just want to give a big old hug. Oh, okay. That's a good tip. If I see a big friendly neighbor coming my way wanting a bear hug, I will stop in my, tra my tracks and extend my arms because I'm all about love. Love is good. Von Reck gifted five memberships to the Oxhorn community. Thank you so much, Von Reck. And congratulations to Gary Lalonde, uh, Mackay Medlin, Giro Von Torival, Shibify, Space Core, and Space Core 2010. Again, thank you so much, Von Reck, and congratulations all. Greg Williams says, Hey, Ox, sorry I've been busy the last couple of weeks, but I'm back. Also, what did one toilet say to the other toilet? Why do you look so flushed? Brilliant. So good. Thank you, Greg Williams. Just on par here. Just amazing games or er, jokes. Loot Goblin, a member for three months under Silver Ox, says perhaps it's not top down. Caesar does hate guns. They were using them before as part of their tribe in slash or picking them up to better fight back. And yet, from a lore perspective, they lost the first battle for Hoover Dam because they didn't use guns because they didn't have any long-range snipers. I mean, how can that happen if it is just top-down? Maybe Caesar is just full of it, and he's got this great ideal about being macho and using melee weapons because the army that he wields is flesh and bone and fragile, and that somehow is superior to those that are not. And everyone under him realizes that it's all bullcrap, and they use guns anyway. And if that's the case, how did they lose the first battle for Hoover Dam when their stated reason for losing is that they didn't have snipers and the NCR did? Hanlon's Rangers were the reasons that the NCR, that the NCR won the first battle for Hoover Dam. It was a quote-unquote dirty trick that Chief Hanlon did using explosives at Boulder City that destroyed all of his top legionaries who ran into the town. Why? Because they didn't have guns that they could have used from afar, but because they had swords and spears and fists, and they ran into the, to the town to try to melee all of the snipers, right? So sure, we could try and, and excuse the legion by saying, sure, it's just Caesar and he's crazy, but the rest of the legion actually uses guns. But then that can't explain the actual canonical lore of the game for why they lost the first battle for Hoover Nam, right? Caillou Gavin says, will you ever play Fallout Miami when the full mod comes out, Ox? Maybe. I tend to prioritize uh, canonical Fallout lore on my channel, but I'm, I'm not uh, saying no. I'm not saying no to these other DLC-sized Fallout mods. It might happen sometime. First says, do you have threads? <laughs> I do. Uh, when... when Twitter changed its name to X. I was like, hmm, I think I see the writing on the, ro the wall here. And I went ahead and made a threads. I reserved my name, but I don't really post anything on there yet. If Twitter, which is now called X, ever just dies completely, maybe I'll 
start transitioning my content over to threads. We'll see. Wolfpack41 says, I'm going to miss these streams when I go off to basic army, army basic training in two weeks. Really enjoy your videos, Oxhorn. Well, good luck to you, Wolfpack91. Thank you so much for watching. And you know what? I'll be here when you're done. When you finish your duty and you get back, stop on by and we'll catch up. Greg Williams says, what's red and bad for your teeth? A brick. And what other lore videos besides the Fallout series? Even though it's your bread and butter, play on. Um, you know, I've experimented with doing lore videos for other games, and they never really perform quite as well as the lore videos that I do for Fallout. So I've been hesitant to make lore videos about other games. I tried some for Outer Worlds, for example, and they, they didn't do very well. I tried some for Skyrim, and they didn't do very well. Um, I'm hoping that Starfield is going to capture my interest. It's going to give me a great deal of passion for the franchise that it, would, it will eventually become and uh, that I'll really want to do lore videos and that they'll be well received. We'll see. AngeCon says, I finally, after three years of playing Fallout 4, have jumped into Fallout New Vegas. It's fun. I learned how to play because of you. Thank you. Hugs from Northern Ontario. Well, thank you, AngeCon. And, I, you know, it's similar for me. I I actually went straight from Fallout... Well, not straight. I played Fallout 3 first, and then 10 years later... Not 10 years. Well, yeah, almost 10 years later, I played Fallout New Vegas. But I didn't really have a full appreciation for Fallout New Vegas until I first played Fallout 4. Then I went back to Fallout New Vegas, and I was able to more fully appreciate the game. Random Greymane says, well, it sort of does explain it. Caesar was, no more guns. But regular soldiers were like, not going to lose again. I see what you're saying. You're suggesting that during the first battle of Hoover Dam, they didn't use weapons as Caesar instructed. But in the second battle for Hoover Dam, they're all ignoring Caesar, who is still saying you shouldn't use guns. And they're all like, yeah, okay, old man, we won't use guns. And they're just using guns. Well, that would explain why the leader of Caesar's Praetorian Guard is trying to get the courier to repair a howitzer at the top of Fortification Hill. Yeah, that's right, the faction that's against long-range weaponry because it's not manly and it's too cowardly, that faction, they're trying to get you to repair a cannon, a howitzer at the top of Fortification Hill. Why? So they can defeat Hanlon's snipers. It's like they realize the best way to defeat snipers is with your own snipers, but they can't have snipers because Caesar doesn't like them for some reason. But what's what's less, what's worse than that? Certainly not a giant cannon at the top of Fortification Hill, which is a long-range weapon and its technology. Like, who just... <laughs> so many things about Caesar is just don't make sense. And it's so frustrating. Yeah. Cox says, the Legion was probably inspired by a comic book called Pax Romana that came out in 2008. It was about a contingency of soldiers and scientists that traveled back in time to take over ancient Rome. Interesting. I'd have to check it out. Pax Romana, the Peace of Rome. Interesting concept. Certainly something that I think uh, Caesar was trying to recreate with his legion in the silliest way possible. Man of Warb says, What I find ironic was that the strange NCR radio reports that everyone thought was just mistakes was actually placed as part of a conspiracy by a guy named Hanlon of Hanlon's Razor fame. Oh. Oh. That's right. Uh, going back to my video on Camp Golf, if you want to learn more about that. I actually didn't make that connection between Hanlon and Hanlon's Razor. That's hilarious. Thank you, Man of Warb. Nick says, see, they just use guns out, out of sight of Caesar. Right, the giant cannon at the top of Fortification Hill that you see for the first time by stepping outside of the tent where Caesar lives, that kind of long-range weaponry high technology, that's right by his bed? Yeah, I'm sure Caesar missed that. <laughs> he, he has no idea that they've got a giant cannon at the top of Fortification Hill. No idea. <laughs>
strip of flesh <clears throat> says, I threw up last night. Well, if you are what you eat, and you ate a strip of flesh, I can see why you threw up last night. Presumably, it was uncooked flesh. And everyone knows that if you eat raw steak, you will get pathogens. This is a conversation we had several weeks ago about making sure that you cook your steaks well enough so that they don't have pathogens. And here is strip of flesh who is what he eats. And he threw up last night, I'm just saying. Caillou Gavin says, why is the NCR flag a two-headed bear? <laughs> okay, okay, I'll give you a second. I'll give you a second. Why, why are there no cows in the Fallout universe? Well, because they all mutated into Brahmin. And what's a Brahmin? It's a two-headed cow. So it's kind of silly to have a two-headed cow on your flag, especially if your pre-war flag as the Californian Republic had a bear on it. So if you want to recognize that you were California, but you're now kind of something else, but you wanna, and you wanna keep the, the theme of the old flag, but recognize that it's a post-apocalypse, what do you do? You give the bear on your flag an extra head and everyone's gonna get it. Everyone who, who wanders this, uh, a post-apocalyptic nuclear Fallout Wasteland is, is going to get with that. Yeah, it, it, it's a post-apocalyptic two-headed bear. Tim Judge, <coughs> pardon me, a member for 40 months in the Silver Ox, <coughs> says, Ox, thoughts on having a pet BD1? And thanks for getting me to my uh, to try Diablo. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed Diablo. Um, thoughts on having a pet BD1? Like a like a real one? Are, are you asking, like, getting a model? Or are we talking about an alternate reality where robots like BD1 could actually exist? I mean, both are great. Yeah, I, th I think if you want a model of BD1, great. If we want to fantasize about having robots help us out in life, sure, sure. That's great, too. <clears throat> Greg Williams says, it's 2 a.m. Ox. What's your favorite late night restaurant, Taco Bell or McDonald's for those midnight cravings? Well, it's been a very long time since I've uh, ever gone, gone on a McDonald's or a Taco Bell run. But I can tell you when I was a younger man, a much younger man, it was Taco Bell that always scratched that itch for me if I ever wanted a midnight run. For a 2 a.m. run, it was definitely Taco Bell. Rachel says, another beautiful moment. Fallout 76, day 22, 20 minutes into the broadcast is the wonderful 20-foot-long wolf neck glitch. A glitch that uh, persisted in Fallout 76 long after the first week of broadcasting. I think I remember when I was doing my Wastelander series, and even my Steel Dawn series. <clears throat> when I had to go back to the uncanny caverns where there were a, a bunch of wolves, I just saw their necks everywhere because they had these <laughs> these giant stretched wolves just all over the place. Uh, all right, so interesting. You're saying um, day 22 of my Fallout 76 live streams, 20 minutes in, we get an interesting glitch. Thank you, Rachel. Adam M says they list the ammo on the budget as casino losses. That's how they get away with, uh, with the with ammunition for the Legion? All right. I like it. It makes sense. Man of Warb says, Real-world militaries often use artillery or airstrikes to neutralize enemy snipers. The notion of using snipers to defeat other snipers is just storybook bravado. I don't care what they use to defeat snipers if their own argument is the reason they don't have snipers to begin with is because there's no honor in having snipers because snipers shoot projectiles from long range. That's their argument, not mine. If that's what they're going to say, how can they justify using a howitzer which shoots projectiles at long range? It's not about what they're using to defeat the snipers. It's the fact that they don't have any snipers and their reason is honor. 
Their reason for not using weapons, guns, is honor. And it's stupid to have that kind of honor in a post-apocalypse. It's even stupider to say you're not going to use guns and then to have guns and use them anyway. Like, we can't even blame randomly generated loot tables for the howitzer at the top of Fortification Hill. That's, like, placed there and you have an entire quest about it. <laughs> How about repairing it? Isaac says, if they were to come out with Fallout Lego sets, what would you most want to build? The Pridwin comes to my mind, but a Liberty Prime model would be cool. Yeah, I think there would be a lot of Brotherhood of Steel themed Lego sets because the Brotherhood of Steel has, let's face it, the best vehicles, the best armor, just everything about them is the absolute best. Most of the post-apocalyptic look of Fallout comes from the Brotherhood faction. So, yeah, I think anything the Brotherhood produces would be amazing. The mobile base crawler for the Enclave would be pretty cool, too. Adam M. says, Caesar's mad at house. He's robbing my troops blind. <clears throat> All right, is this a joke and I just don't get it? Because, because Caesar's mad at house. He's robbing my troops blind. Because the house always wins or something like that. Oh. Stina says, hey, Ox, haven't joined a scotch and smoke rings in a while, but I have been catching up when I can. Cheers, everyone. Here's to a fun stream. Thank you, Stina. Cheers to you, too. Rachel says, if you were a donut, what type would you be? I mean, a maple bar, I guess. I like maple bars. Bear claws are okay. I could be a bear claw. Loot Goblin says, maybe an easy answer. Blame the tumor. Caesar may not have cared about guns and tech. Graham not only uses 1911s and trains the tribes how to use them. Lots of issues here. Joshua Graham uses 1911s after he stopped working for Caesar. When he was working for Caesar, he likely followed Caesar's rule, right? Which is why he lost, as general, the first battle for Hoover Dam. Once you abandon the Legion, you also abandon their rules and you are now able to have weapons. So that's to the side and completely incidental. The problem with the tumor argument is that the tumor is new. The effects of the tumor are new. And we're talking about a faction that has for decades been tearing across the Midwest, conquering tribe after tribe after tribe. We're talking about a faction that has ingrained Latin into the core fabric of its society and has absorbed all other tribes into itself. And so we're talking about a faction that has had traditions and norms for a very long time. Traditions and norms that predate any tumor that may have emerged in Caesar's brain. Especially since there's no clear evidence of the tumor affecting his personality or decision making. It's possible that it has, but no one around Caesar has even mentioned it. The same men who are following him when we meet him during the events of Fallout New Vegas are the same men who had followed him years ago, and none of them mention any behavioral change in Caesar, and many of them are surprised when slash if he finally dies. So, yeah, we could try to explain it away like that, but I think it's very unlikely, and I think we can explain it away simply by just Caesar being stupid, by the, by the entire thing not making a lot of sense. Tim Judge says, Alan Wake comes out in October. We need to get you to dress as Barry for Halloween. Barry! Oh, I, I got. I hope we see Barry. Adam M says it's not a tumor. That's right. It's it wasn't a tumor. It was cancer, wasn't it? I forget. Was it a tumor? No. It it was it was cancer in another character that will not be named for, you know, fear of spoilers for Fallout Four. Was it a tumor or cancer? I forget which one it was. I think maybe it was a tumor. I think it was a tumor. Anyway. Anyway, we need to get going. Let's see. What time is it? Yeah, it's time to start the game.
uh, Catty Lack says, Ox, I've missed you. I'm glad I finally get to catch a live stream. Hope all has been well with you. Keep up the great work. Cheers to you and chat. Thank you, Caddy Lack. It's good to see you again. I've been doing really well, and I'm glad you made it back. Ranker1138 says, The joke isn't a dad joke until it's full grown. G-R-O-A-N. Thank you, uh, Ranker. Bell Myris says, love ya, Ox. Looking forward to the stream. Thank you, Bell Myris. Wandering Paladin, a member for 41 months, and a Silver Ox says, who was Mr. Rogers' fitness trainer? Oh, no, is this joke going to disturb me? Let's see. Who was Mr. Rogers' fitness trainer? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Should be my neighbor, Mr. Arnold Schwartz, a neighbor. Thank you. Trying to find a neighbor joke. That's, um, I mean, it works. It al almost doesn't work, but it does. It, it gets there in the end. Thank you. Greg, <laughs> Greg Williams says, glad to see that you got rid of the creepy doll for the cute donut plushie. Listen, um, I'm, for, um, first of all, I'll, I'll recognize that you didn't like the doll. And I also didn't like the doll which is why I got rid of it years ago. <laughs> I, I like the donut plushie, he's cute, but I also just want to, to mention that there ha never has been a doll. Like, it's not like I kept the doll around. I showed him on camera once, and then I never showed him on camera again, and he's been gone for years. It's not like he's still in this room somewhere hiding in plain sight. He is not, the baby doll is not haunting this office. And for those of you who suggest that he is, I would encourage you to embrace reality, my friends. Right? Fantasies are great, but only if they're momentary. The moment you start to believe in a fantasy every single day of your life, it suddenly becomes, um, what does it suddenly become? It suddenly becomes like a conspiracy, right? And we don't do conspiracies here. There is no baby doll in this room. We are not being haunted, and I challenge any of you to prove me wrong. The Easy Life says, My wife and I once played Fallout while drunk. She told me to go to Quarry Junction with no armor and a 9mm. Miraculously met with a traitor, killed him, and found a fat man on his body. Lol, lucky break. I mean, yeah, you found a... What level were you? You found a fat man on a random traitor's body as you were on your way to Quarry Junction? Well, lucky you indeed. Tim Judge says, Only a matter of time before the ox plushie. Actually, yeah, you, you don't even know how right you are. I'm working really hard to try and make the ox plushie a reality. Okay. Ah. I'm setting my pop filter on fire here. Hold on. Okay, my friendly neighborhood. Let's do a new game. <clears throat> I saw something. Felt something, maybe. It was more real than reality. I felt like I was lost, walking through this dark tunnel and the ground beneath me stretched on for an eternity. Felt like I was dying. Well, he swerved out of his lane, striking a passenger van that started a pile up, killing seven. In weather, we'll all be sad to see another band of thunderstorms heading toward the city tomorrow night. Was that a Shaun of the Dead reference? I just had this insane sense of of um, emptiness and terror, and I just, I just. I don't care who she sees. We're not even married anymore. She can see whoever she wants. So, Ashley, what did you do to end up solving the problem? I ignored it. Tried to forget. I watched television. 
and that helped? It dulls the pain. You're gonna scam the alley, go through other people, ignoring your own life, your own problems, your own issues. And there's the title screen. Oh, difficulty. Okay. Adam M says, sir, does said ox plushie include a pillow? It does not include a pillow. You'll have to bring one of those yourself. Scarecrow Kaiser says, this game made by brothers. They've made several, have they really? I'm excited. Okay, uh, I don't want to live in regret, so we're gonna go normal difficulty here. Normal, a difficulty for normal players. Man, that's descriptive. Okay, last job of the day. What's this one about? Work order. Sprocket Palm Property Management. Work order request. Client City Network Broadcasting Group. Property 123 Sunrise Street. Aww. Date, July 8th, 1993. Crewman assigned, Gordon J. O'Brien. Description of problem. Vacant studio lot regained power last night and began televising over top normal programming. Uh-oh. <laughs> The client has requested that the broadcast array on top of the central hotel be disabled to prevent further incidents. Supervisor Signature J. Note, Crewman O'Brien is on probation for sullen and impolite behavior towards clients. Failure to satisfactorily complete this work order will result in termination. Oh, poor G Gordon J. O'Brien. <laughs> Sullen and impolite behavior. Hopefully we can help Gordon complete this job. Ooh. Well, there's one, two, three. All right, what do we got here? Check. Oh, I'm not eating that. That's been there for days. <laughs> I love his voice. Oh, I'm not eating that. Let's open the glove compartment. Ooh, Choco Tips. Or is that Nips? Choco Nips. What's this? Got that in the war. Last time I stick my neck out for someone. Which war was that? Was that, uh, I mean, it's set in 93, so it couldn't have been the Gulf War? Uh, maybe it was. I guess Vietnam. He sounds really old and crotchety. Check. I'm not leaving yet. I just got here. I like how uh, the brand of car is Honka. It's not like Honda or Tonka. It's a mix, it's Honka. That's great. Jackal says, what do you call a magic owl? Houdini. And let's leave the truck. Thank you for that one, Jackal. I disabled the antenna. Oh, the last job of the day is always the worst. Okay, disable up uh, an antenna. It looks like we're healthy. There's my work truck, Sprocket Palm Property Management. Let's take a look at our settings to see if we can improve anything. Shadow quality, let's push that up to high. Texture limit, none. Anti-aliasing, ambient occlusion, exposure, contrast, bloom, and grain. Uh, do we want bloom and grain? Those kind of things always annoy me in games, but it does add a certain ambiance to a horror game. So, I'll tell you what, let's boost up the field of view. This is a little small for me. I typically like... Uh, now that's too much, 120. Let's go to 90. 90, pretty good. Supply. Back. Okay, so there's the office. There's MFN. Uh, and 123, so clearly that's where we need to go. Do we go straight there or do we explore a little bit? Sesh the Cat says, I'm so glad you're playing this game. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, Sesh the Cat. Ricky with friends, twice daily on public access. Can I jump? I can't jump. So I can sprint. 
Can I sprint? I cannot sprint. I've got one moving speed. All right, we've got um, a sewer here, but we can't access it. Zip zap, here comes the signals. It's really televised from MFN. And we've got garbage over here. Ooh, what's that? Check. Looks like a crank could go here. Ooh, already we've got a puzzle. Looking for a crank that we need to put in there. What does the sign say? I can barely read it. Secret entrance. Shh. Secret spelled with a K. Secret entrance. Shh. Okay. It's just so hard to see that. Uh, maybe that's why it's a secret. We need to find a crank. Let's start by going to the office. It's locked. That's where they want me to go. I'm gonna go there last. Give me a crank. Can't access that. Loading bay. But it looks like I can go up here. Ooh. Is that a statue or what? Oh, a couple of statues out there. All right, we got a taxi here. It's locked. There's a key card reader. reader. All right, so we need a crank and we need a key card. So bear that in mind, making mental notes about where to put all this. I can't jump. Well, I guess I can sprint. All right, A, B, it's C, D, E, F, G. Oh. Do I want to be his buddy? I don't know, probably not. <clears throat> Aviary. Some sort of slot. Well, what sort of slot? Huh. Okay, there are musical notes on this door, and this is an aviary, so something to do with birds, I guess. We'll bear that in mind if we find anything that fits into a slot. And right, here's another creature. Must be another one of the Muppets from the show. And child, uh, children's chalk drawings. That's cute. There's the chalk. Okay, there's building one, two, three. There are lights. And then what's over here? The public park. Okay, so we've got some sort of electrical cord winding this way. All right, so to open the door, we gotta access this. It's a key with a diamond pattern on it, so we're looking for a diamond key. I'm guessing a key on a key ring with a diamond shape on it, that's gonna allow us to turn on the power to open that gate. Well, that appears to be it for the exterior, so let's go to building one, two, three, and head upstairs, see what's wrong with this television show. There's an elevator. Maybe it still works. Well, considering we've got power. Uh-oh. Some sort of purple slime on the door there. All right, we've got a staircase going up there, and that's it. Ring me. Ring me. Okay. What's going to hop up uh, there? Let's see. This is very slow and deliberate. Raise the curtain. Bring up the lights. The neighborhood is coming to town. Uh, 
Hello, I'm here to disconnect the antenna. Television's heartbeat has returned. A spirit of cheer brightens every child's eye. The cry goes round the kindergarten class. The neighborhood! The neighborhood! Okay. I I'm here to disconnect the antenna. I am Ricky the Sock. Your television will never be the same. We- hold on. Did you say disconnect the antenna? Yes. Oh my, no, 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 no. You mustn't do that. That would be a catastrophe. It's broadcasting over the news. The news? No, no, trust me. The antenna is just fine as it is. Doesn't need any disconnecting. Tell you what, you wait here and I'll... Oh, there's no and need I'll, uh, I'll, get you, I'll get you some... Oh. That wasn't pleasant. I'm gonna take a sec. Okay. Um, okay then. So for a minute there, I thought it was like a pre-recorded uh, dialogue or something, like he was an animatronic robot, but then he stopped and paused to respond to something that you said, which was creepy. And then as he moved, we discovered there was no arm inside that sock puppet. Yeah. Key card. Is that the one we need? It had a number four on it, so it might not be the one we need. Let's inspect this. That was... special. That was special. <clears throat> Revan Star says, Hello, Ox. What do you call a beer with no teeth? I'm sorry. I read that wrong. Let me start over. What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. Rawr. Thank you, Revan Star. Okay, we've got a variety of keys back there. But I can't jump. Of course not. Well. Oh, hold on a second there. I, there's a button here. What on earth? Is this glue? Okay, so before we can use the elevator, we gotta get rid of that glue. Oh, that's for the slot outside. Yes. Well, we found one. Shall we go insert it and see what happens? Buy candy. I don't have any tokens. <clears throat> okay. So that's how I'm going to heal myself, I'm guessing. All right, let's uh, go put the the thing in the slot outside just to see what happens, and then we'll come back inside and go up the, the staircase. Whoa! Hey, who's that? Wait, did you see that? Hey, all right. First, let's go insert the slot thing. Okay, um, well, I'm curious about the staircase. Sorry, I'm doing this the long way. They give us a key card, and if the key card is supposed to go outside, then that means there should be something that blocks our path upstairs, forcing us back outside. But if there's not, then I want to find out exactly what's up here. So let's check up here first, and then we'll go back outside. Okay, Norman. Looks like something could be placed here. June bug. <clears throat> Looks like something could be placed here as well. Okay. Leonard. Oh, are these all boss puppets that we're going to have to defeat? And when we defeat them, we come back here and put something in here? This is Liliana. Leonard and George. George. 
This area is off limits. It's a lock from the other side. Dot, dot, dot. It's locked. Okay, so the other two are, are locked, but this one is dot, dot, dot. One, two, three. All right, well, as I uh, suspected, our progress is blocked on this top floor. So I'm glad we came back just to see what's up there. Let's go now and use the key card to access that room. Michael Duke says, what's up, dude? Been a fan for years. Thank you, Michael Duke. Glad you made it to a live broadcast today. so I don't have to get in them. MFN. A, B, C, right. Inspect. Entertainment Guide. First broadcast, the City Tribune, Saturday, November 9th, 1968. Television's Friendly New Neighbor. Review of My Friendly Neighborhood by Richard Lightsbury. This week saw the premiere of a new series on the City Network aimed at preschool-aged children, My Friendly Neighborhood. The show centers on the titular Friendly Neighborhood and its resident puppets who, with the help of adults like Stevie, Richie Brony, teach viewers about a variety of subjects including numbers, letters, and how to be a friendly neighbor. The show's catch-all term for age-old lessons about caring and sharing. While adult viewers may find their message trite, children's hearts are captured by the neighbors. Like literally? Each felt furball becomes a beloved friend whose words are hung onto with a trust and devotion rarely seen in older audiences. Previously aired as Ricky and Friends on independent public access television, the series and creator Al Gerswald were recently signed by the City Network Broadcasting Group and production moved to their historic City Network Hotel studio on the west side. Their move into the big leagues of broadcasting is accompanied by... Here, the text is illegible. Do I have an inventory? I do. Look at that. Move, examine, discard. We can examine it. A plastic key card might open another part of the studio. We now know what it does. Let's examine this. A small metal token. Can't imagine they're worth much real money. And we've got the candy bar. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's a big puppet hand on the door. Oh, okay. Oh, it's gonna be one of those games, isn't it? <laughs> the Mystic Maze, the Shadow Sapphire. Health O Lax. Nine out of ten doctors recommend. Quick delight. Can you count to nine? Puppet Pirates Cove. Have a smiling day. Alright, we got something there. Oh, do we open that door or do we go anywhere else? Like literally anywhere else. Well, let's see. Ah! We didn't mean to actually hey, go. Yo, I'm Norman. I'm Hello? a really normal guy. Is anyone there? I just kind of show up to be a friendly face in the background. Uh, sometimes I get some lines to recite too. Well, let me show you. Uh, <clears throat> Whoa! <laughs> that was a great one. Wait, 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 wait. Let me do another. Uh, the ears through. No, no. Yay! I love that one. 
the longer you keep me around, the more help I'll be. <laughs> Sounds like Ernie. <laughs> I mean, if I leave him alone, he'll leave me alone, right? Of the day, I always eat the food that most represents how I feel at lunch. What sort of thing do you eat? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> when I'm feeling really happy, I eat watermelon. When I'm sad, I eat leftovers. When I'm confused, I eat the roadkill. We are all friendly here. Ah, okay. Friendly, friendly. friendly. <laughs> 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 He's just started running towards me. Oh, I know that the chat gave me advice earlier that I should just go for it if someone starts, if a friendly puppet starts running towards me, but I think not. I'm just gonna nope out of that one. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, great, it's locked from the other side. Fine. Mr. Master Chief 1594 says, <clears throat> Am I right, Ox? There are Resident Evil vibes in this game, huh? And advice on the token. Use it wisely to save your game progress. It... It's one use only. Oh, that saves the game? Oh, dear God. I learned my numbers when I was a kid. <laughs> Here, let me show you how I learned. Hold your hands up in the air. Now bring them down in front of your face. See, that's two heads. Now take one of your hands, put it in your mouth, and swallow as hard as you can. Now you have one hand, Inside of your stomach and one hand outside. This is the best part. Your other hand, put it next to the hand of your mouth and swallow again. <laughs> now you have two hands in your stomach. That's how numbers work. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> don't, don't forget to hack your hands back up. We, uh, we have a, a, a AR for our, our own. Our, 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 okay, uh, we've got a uh, for. For fo fox so fo 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 Light cleaners to give myself something to make shapes out of. I'll make triangles and squares and circles and patch them all together. Then the fun part starts. Take your closest friend and separate <coughs> all of their parts into little piles based on color. <laughs> this will be what you make your crafts out of. I like to use Norman because he has all sorts of oranges and reds I can use. Now I start patching my piles of red onto the light cleaners. I made a ball of Leonard I. What do you think, Leonard Love? Oh, sure, being a lump is great. <laughs> okay. So, red light, green light, sure. <laughs> I want to make new friends. New friends, so. And she ran towards me, too. Well, I'm glad they can't open doors. All right, so we've got a triangle room. It's locked. Puppets Cove. We've got another room. There we are. Inspect. Okay, health relax. Magazine. Magazine? Eight magazines. And that's it. Tutorial, you can use health alax to restore health. Press tab to open your inventory. Press E to continue. Okay, inspect. Episode 16 script. Neighborhood street? No, main street. The neighborhood is having an outdoor bazaar. Everyone is lining up at Leonard's antique display to try on a beautiful pair of earrings. Pearl enters, sees the earrings and cuts into the line pushing Liliana out of the way and causing a commotion. Stevie standing up from a bench. Pearl, that wasn't nice. Pearl sheepish, sheepishly glances around at the others who are all glowering at her and hunches in shame. Stevie, 
You can't just push people out of the way to get what you want, Pearl. It's more friendly to think about other people first. Do you see? Pearl shakes her head timidly. Stevie, well, maybe this will make it clear. Song, put another before yourself. Put another before yourself. Before you go, see if someone needs help. Got fake eyelashes, makeup, and all right. The Puppet's Big Heist. Oh, this is a nice looking bathroom. Cinder blocks aplenty. Ooh, duct tape. All right. Good old toilet duct tape. Can't leave home without it. What's in the garbage? Diamond! Is that where we get the diamond key? Well, that's a key. It's locked. Wrench. Yes. Tutorial! Press left button to swing the wrench. Hooray! Aww. Aww. I guess it's only for bad guys and not for environment stuff. Greg says stormtroopers or blah, 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 blah man. <laughs> I enjoy listening to them all. Stormtroopers are great, but so are, so is Blarg Blarg, man. All right, um, so this is supposed to be a target arena, but this is a diamond door, but it's locked. Okay, so do I have to go back out and clonk that guy in the head? I guess so. <laughs> music? Music! Oh, I love it so much! You've never heard music before? Get off of me! I love meeting new Stay people! Stay back! Scrap! <laughs> A, D, C, D, E, F, 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 Oh, jeez. Oh, I only feel that in the morning. Aren't we friends yet? When are we starting? Are we starting now? Okay, he's gonna kill me. Did that heal me? No, it says danger. Oh, this is supposed to heal me. Lunch is my favorite meal of the day. I always eat the food that most represents how I'm feeling at lunch. What sorts of things do I eat? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> when I'm feeling happy, I eat watermelon. Get I swear you. Ow. Oh, jeez. I only feel that in the morning. Well, what the heck? Like. I love to see. Oh! 
It's got farther range than you would imagine. You need a Ooh, but that kills me. And I appear here. Oh. Oh, I gotta do all that again. Okay, uh... So that wrench uh, has greater distance than I imagined. I thought I had to get hey up, yo, you know, I'm Norman. within I'm melee. Guy. I just kind of uh, show up with your friendly face Locked. in the background. Maybe Sometimes I could find the key. What's this like shape all about? Let me see. <laughs> Alright, so I'm starting to think that the, uh, <laughs> the colors... Oh, this is a dead Muppet. Something to make shapes out of. I'll make triangles and squares and circles and patch them all together. Then the fun part starts. Take your closest friend and separate all of their parts into little piles based on color. This will be what you make your crafts out of. I like to use Norman because he has all sorts of... Hey! Hey! We're all friendly here. Friendly? Friendly? All right, that was locked. This one had the magazine and the health of something or other. That had that. The bathroom had the duct tape. Okay, so there's the wrench. <clears throat> I gotta figure out how to kill this guy. Sleeping can be the best part of your day. I always start by getting ready for bed. First, I get my PJs on so I can be warm and comfy all night. Alright, let's see what the night. distance is. Next, I go to the bathroom and grab my toothbrush. <laughs> That's pretty far. So, I, <laughs> I was able to straight up hit this guy with a monkey wrench from 10 feet away. That was not intuitive. Okay, tutorial. When enemies are knocked over, you can tape them. Look at an enemy and press E. Press E to continue. Oh, yeah. Okay, he's taped. All right. Well, he will no longer be a problem. I guess that means the duct tape is going to be as rare in this game as adhesive is in the Fallout universe. Oh. <laughs> I just love their random uh, noises. All right, heal, five cents. Uh, I'm okay, I'm healthy. Save, two. Oh, shoot. Do I save now? Inspect. Take soundstage map. Okay, how do I access this? Press M to use your map. Okay, floor two. Can I zoom in? No, no, no. All right, I'm gonna read this. Floor two. Complete, not complete. Oh, that's nice. So it's in a very Resident Evil way. It tells me which uh, floors are complete. So the stage four auditorium is complete. Where am I? Am I right there? I wish I could zoom in on the map. Alright, so that's the triangle key, which I don't have access to. Alright. So I used the tokens to save. Magazine 10. 
Well, I don't know what this stuff does yet, so do I... Oh, my coins are stacking up here. Magazine. Key card. Alright, well, I'll keep things in the tool chest. Do I save now? Yeah. Alright. One save. Well, I don't have tape to tape her up, so I need to avoid her. For birds, you can bring sunflower seeds. For squirrels, you can bring peanuts. For dogs, you can bring squirrels. For the sewer grate, you can bring a... He's gone. He was at that door. Oh, this is that door. No, he went through that door. Okay. Well, I don't have more duct tape. Well, what do I have? I've got a key card, but that's only for stage four. I've got a magazine. I have no idea what this does. I could knock him down, but I can't tape him up. All right. Well, let's see if he's still in that room. Uh, he can, he can um, reach me from quite a distance. <laughs> Can't taper. Maybe we can jump over her. So that means we're gonna have to do it again when we come back. Magazine and more health alax, whatever it's called. Oh, we're down here again. Magazine. I still have no idea what the magazine is for. Alright, so I'm gonna have to knock her out again as well. While she's down for the count, I can inspect all of this for tape. Tape, tape, come on, get me tape, 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 tape. Any tape? No tape. Can I get up there somehow? No! Alright, um... I taped him up. He's awake. What? La la and up. La la and down. Shimmy, shimmy, swivel, swivel. Twirl, twirl. La 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 la. Can he hurt me when he's... I don't want to risk it. Up, up, down. Twirl, twirl, step, step, step. What? Learn the alphabet? The alphabet? <laughs> oh, I love it. 
<laughs> All right, uh, come on, give me some more duct tape. Still locked. I've got two guys that I was able to uh, incapacitate, but I couldn't do anything about it because, I mean, they're going to come back because they freaking have... Can I craft a gun? Because I'm getting a lot of magazines as if I use this as ammunition. A magazine, M magazine. What does this do? Examine. A stack of paper that fits into that index thing? Okay. It's a clue. Index thing? What index thing? When did we see an index thing? Well, let's go back. When you go to the park, bring some food for all the wild animals. For birds, you can bring sunflower seeds. For squirrels, you can bring peanuts. For dogs, you can bring squirrels. For the sewer grate, you can bring yesterday's leftovers. For the sand pit, you can bring whatever's in your trash can. For the ambient environment, you can bring a punk rock band that practices in your neighbor's backyard shed. And for me, your bestest friend, you can just bring a friend. All I need is a friend. I learned my numbers when I was a kid. <laughs> Here, let me show you how I learned. Hold your hands up in the air. Now, I love them. <laughs> They're so great. Okay, index See, thing, index thing. Hands. Now, the target says the chat. Hands, yeah, I can't I can't hit the target because I don't have can. a long range weapon. Now you have one hand I've got a wrench. See, there's the target. Yeah, what do I, I can't throw anything or shoot anything because I don't have a long range weapon. And I can't open that. I can't pick up a beer bottle. So I think this is supposed to be a targeting range once I once I get this key or get a weapon that I can use. But I don't have anything that I can do. And Greg says, okay, this game is actually too funny to be scary. <laughs> I, I feel you. I feel you. But I am laughing my head off. Sometimes we would swap our arms. Then we would swap our legs. One by one, each piece was swapped. Whoa, yay! I need more tape! Index thing. Index thing? That's a save spot. It's a heal spot. Can I craft something in here? So like, uh, can I move things together? Magazine 14, magazine 26. Okay, I gotta figure out this magazine puzzle. That, I think, is the key. What? She's What's back! The alphabet? What's the alphabet? Oh, that's easy. It's all words are made out of. It's for a gun, says the chat. Okay, well, I don't have a gun. The sun is setting. I have a key card. Maybe my key card can work for the public park. No, it needs the diamond key. Oh. All right, where did I see the key card? I think it was inside. There was another one that I remember.
Well, I mean, so far the only thing that I can do at this point, once I finish exploring up here, is to go back to Norman and try to defeat him. The others have been really easy, but Norman is, uh, tricky. All right, well, I guess let's go save and then try to get Norman. Though I don't know if we need to save. I didn't really do much since I last saved. Have I gotten anything since then? I don't think, I don't think so. Okay, Norman, you've got really long range, so this is going to be tricky. Kite Norman around a planter, maybe? Yeah, I could try that. The mail, the mail comes every day. I look out the window waiting for the moment it arrives. And then when it does, I rush outside to see what I got. Sometimes we're all friendly here. Friendly, friendly, friendly. <laughs> that worked. Thank you, Wandering Paladin. Oh, just hope he doesn't go. He can open doors. That'd be bad. A Puppet Winter Song. The Puppet Storm Chicago. A musical movie. Oh, look at these guys. That's a lot of foot paintings of himself. This must be the actor who plays uh, Norman. Educating the world. Have a smiling day. The Scribe, Tuesdays on MFN. The puppet's biggest heist. Cutscene. Hey, yeah, there it is. There you are. Now don't toddle off again. I've got some snackaroos waiting back in the lobby. Hey, what's going on here? Your puppet friends are attacking me. Oh, are they? How embarrassing. By the way, what's your name? What? Your name, <laughs> your moniker, your handle, your nom de plume. It's Gordon. Gordon? What a beautiful name. I could say it all day. Gordon, Gordon, Gordon. Is this a gun? Does it work? Oh my, that's where I left that. I was looking for it all over the place. Wow. Ugh, <laughs> fine. If you're gonna go gallivanting all over the place, then at least watch out for Pearl. Pearl? You know, the enormous bird that crushes people. Don't get on her bad side is all I- <laughs> What was that? <laughs> okay, let's do this. <laughs> we can teach them. I'm trying we can to teach count to them. ten. To ten. Where are we starting? Where are we starting now? I'm working on the script. Oh, jeez. Hey, man. Learn your alphabet, huh? Well, uh, okay. I just need tape. I got a note here, but I wasn't able to read it because, um... Is there like a menu where I can read everything that I picked up? Well, what did the note say? Crap. Yeah, you have files. Use the F key. Oh, okay. Entertainment guide. Work order. Script. The stenographer. Hank's inventor diary. April 16th, 1969. I finally got it working. It's a real beaut. I think I'll call it the stenographer because it shoots letters out of an index. Shouldn't be dangerous at all, but it'll really give someone a clonk if they get hit in the head. Should be useful for security, special effects, fun, etc. Hank. 
All right, well, we'll leave them here. I've got to be careful with my ammo, it looks like. Well, uh, I've got the gun, but I don't have anything new. I didn't find a key in there. Like, a circle key? And the bodies are gone. That's still locked. Okay. Well, it's cool that I got the gun, but I, I feel like we haven't gotten enough to actually advance. I'm a craft monster! <laughs> you give me a task, and I'll give you a craft! I There's a door over there, but I can't jump. Make shapes out of. Like, I can't okay, jump across. <laughs> squares and circles and patch them all together. Then the fun part starts. Take your clothes, I'm here to educate the children! You might be a craft! Shoot the target, says the chat. All right. Yeah, now that I have a gun, I can shoot the target, see what happens. Good point. Let's find our way there. Circle key, finally. All right, so we had the two double doors back uh, where we found Ernie, or what's his name, Norman. And then there was that one room that we passed. If you can draw, you can do all sorts of things. <laughs> Grab your pencil and let's go on an adventure. Oh, that's a triangle room. Crap. But it's a double circle. <laughs> Sometimes we would swap there it is. our arms. Then we would swap our legs. One by one, each piece was swapped. And then... Hey, Aha! Well, <laughs> I'm surprised I was able to actually interact with it. Okay, pizza, food, cookies, nice, lots of treats, uh, extra noses, googly eyes, patches. All right, so these are doll components for setting up the show. Uh, what's this? It's taped shut. Yes! I've got tape. I wanna use it on Norman. He's the worst. Feather hang. Wet pearls. Wet porous pearls? Do not touch. Alright, well I won't touch. Feather hang? What does that mean? Well I gotta avoid the big bird apparently. It's a, a giant big bird. Oh, 
I'm a craft monster! <laughs> you give me a task, and I'll give you a craft! I like to start with pipe cleaners to give myself Secret. something to make shapes cheat out tape. of. I'll make triangles and a cheat squares unlocked. and circles and patch them all together. Then the fun part starts. Take your closest friend and separate all of their parts into little piles based on color. This will be what you make your crafts out of. I like to use Norman because he has all sorts of oranges and reds I can use. Oh, there's another one. Oh, that's you the door I came out of. Okay. Piles of red onto the pipe. okay, cool. So I got a cheat. But I wonder what the cheat does. Don't touch the wet stuff is good advice in general, Oxhorn. There, there's a lot of wet stuff that should not be touched. The nature of, Oh, man, I wasted freaking ammo. The nature of things being wet is uh, distressing sometimes. Hey, okay, well, this is a dead end. Now what? <laughs> well, we can get rid what of... What uh, do you do when you get upset? Do you let it get you down? Let me tell you about the time. We could use the tape. I want to use it on Norman. I don't want to use it on these other guys as they're too easy. There's the, also the double the double door that we could go through. Oh, I need to go back. And I should probably save, huh? I'm doing okay on inventory so far. Do I need this this key card? Probably not. Let's move that. Okay. The mail? The mail comes every day. I look out the window, waiting for the moment it appears. And then when it does, I rush outside to see what I... <gasps> Doggone it. I'm getting all turned around. How am I here again? What? Learn the alphabet? What's the alphabet? Oh, oh I remember. It's across the hall. What do you do when you get a Do you let it get you? All right, let's get rid of Norman. It's gone. Crap. This must be one of the old sets. Oh, look how many there are. Key! There's the square key. bird. All right, what do we do to not piss off the bird? X? Magazine. Lunch is my favorite meal of the day. There he is. I always eat the food that most represents how I'm feeling at lunch. What sort of things do I eat? Well, I'm glad you asked. Welcome! Welcome! Oh, oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
You're taped up, Norman. You're done. Done, son. What is this? A letter block. Here's another X. Okay, so what's the importance of all of these Xs? I guess we're gonna find out as we continue to explore. Give me more tape. Marine idea says you had stairs down the first alley that you entered. Oh, did I? Okay, I'll go check it out. Fishkey says, what's up, Ox? How's the game so far? Never heard of it. Ox, curious if you saw my suggestion on Twitter for Somerville? I think it would fit well. I'll have to check it out. Thank you, Fishkey. Check. There's no handle on this side. Okay, I need to find a handle. Or get around to the other side. Oh, I see. All right, staircase going down. That's probably gonna take me outside. So let's finish. Uh, let's finish exploring down here first. Lock, that's what I need the square key for. Wait. There we go. I unlocked that door. Hammer, come on, let me use the hammer. Ah, okay. So that's where the key's gonna be now that that's open. No matter what, I always open it immediately. 
socks? I got it in the mail. A letter from a dear old friend? I got it in the mail. An assortment of the best bugs the world has to offer? Well, that one just appears in my house. Sometimes we would swap our arms. Then we would swap our legs. One by one, these would swap. But I need to get to that room up there. They give you new fingers. We're all through. Oh, I like oh, that was it. And I'm dead. Shoot, didn't realize that. That's quite a bird. Yeah, you're right. There's a staircase going up here. Does Norman notice? Ah! Oh! All right, let's see what's up here. Looks like it can open, but the lid won't lift. All right, so we need something to repair this box. Detour that way, there's a mushroom. Alright, so we've got a mushroom box, an onion box, and that dude up there. Okay. All right, well, we need to heal up. There's the square door. We know where the square key is. The register has a slot for a square key as well. We need to lift that uh, that partition again in order to get the square the square key. All right, so now we've got a coconut. We can't drop down there. We could go down there. Nice. Another magazine. Detour. M letter block. right there. All right, so I can't go back that way. not open yet. All right, so I got to open it first. Oh, come on. A is for B is for friend. Latch won't release. I'm going to have to go through all this again. At least I can open this now. Okay, so last time we went up. Oh, but the bird is in our way now. Crap. Yeah. 
There's the bird. Now there's the shark. Okay, so this is where I placed the blocks, but now I gotta figure out what I'm supposed to spell. Alright, well at least that, um, removed my inventory. We have quite a few letters that we could work with. Hey, this looks interesting. All right, so we get to choose which one we want to, we want to open. Uh, shark was the one that was nearby, wasn't it? All right, let's go find Shark. Where was shark? We saw shark recently. I think it was over here, somewhere. Fishkey says, notice that you've been working on your playlists. I'm working my way through Scotch and Smoke Rings season 11 and a half of it disappeared today. When does season 12 drop? Uh, <laughs> so I or, uh, so season 11 was uh, really the first season that I had some of my uh, episodes in uh, organized into, but I had some of season 12 organized into season 11. So if you were watching season 11 and some of the videos disappeared, they're now organized into season 12. To access them, go to the playlists section of my YouTube channel. There's a tab at the top that just says playlists, and then you'll find everything organized there. Just find season 12, and you should be able to pick up right where you left off. <laughs> Okay, I forgot where uh, where Shark was, so what we're going to do is we're going to go put that back onto Onion, because we know where Onion is. Okay, <laughs> well, as, as long as that bird doesn't come for us, and of course they're not giving me enough tape. <laughs> He's awake! Hey! <laughs> all right, where was Onion? Onion was over here somewhere. You can do all sorts of things. I think it was up here. Let's go on an adventure. He's back. Oh. Oh. I see. Okay, so we had opened onion. I'm sorry, we had opened shark, and that's where we found the ammunition. So now we did uh, onion. We just got the ammunition. Now we need to go back and do coconut and then retrace our steps to get the ammunition. But they don't last long. Go away! Oh, he's scooching! He's scooching! Well, that one disappeared at my house. I stopped having shirt in the mail. My neighbor stopped into a box and shipped it to my house. Yep. 
All right, there was mushroom and coconut up there. tape so I'm gonna have to make this quick I got shotgun shells or presumably whatever equates to shotgun shells here no tape so I can't bind them but I am now retracing my steps back through the stuff that I had explored earlier Okay, let's finish exploring over here before we go down there. Oh no, I did it again! Tough. I should have saved it for him. All right, we can't go that way. It's locked from the other side. Liliana, Liliana. I've been Liliana since before I knew. <laughs> no hot. Oh. oh, boy. Are we going to be the best of friends? We can oh, my oh, I'm excited to go. All right, then we need to go down here to open up the door to M. Or to square. To get the square key. Then we can get the square register. All right, hold on, I need to reload my cigar. we go. Finally. Okay. Let's go back and get the square register. Then let's go kill what's her name. And we can get, oh, we got to get the square key first. Right. And that's what, so we have to go all the way back around to get to the square register. Where'd she go? Square key. All right. And of course, that's where the bird is. Right there.
Letter blocks. This is just... I should go save. I really don't want to do all of this again. Oh, I wish they'd give me more tape. The mail? The mail comes every day. Well, I need to figure out what sort of word I'm supposed to be spelling. Oh, come on. I haven't found pizza yet. We're gonna leave that on mushroom because I think mushroom's gonna be the first one we find. Sometimes we would swap our arms, then we would swap our legs one by one. Each piece was swapped. This is gonna force me to go back that way, though, and I don't want to do that. Oh, someone is coughing and hacking. All right, there's a diamond door. We need to get the diamond key. Hey, here we go. Square door. Yes. More health alax. Right now. How? Oh, just get me out of here. That's right. Square door. Yeah. Hammer and correct that TV screen right open. Go ahead. You have no idea how many friends are in here. Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go. The S. All right, I'm guessing the word is like neighbors or friends or something like that. What do you do when you get upset? Do you let it get you down? Let Come on, give me tape, tape, tape. My friend, Leonard, got me all upset at First, I, uh... Oh. I'll wait to pay to heal until after I'm out of healing stuff. Yes! Oh, tape. Thank you. And I know exactly which one I want to use it on. The one that's really difficult. Well, I mean, I'm doing okay so far on inventory. Like, I've got plenty of room. So we're not gonna use, the it's good to know this little uh, safe space is here though. We can find our way back. Let's look out here. All right, I'm gonna go get that, that guy with the blonde hair and the pigtails. He is a, he soaks up bullets. I learned my numbers when I was a kid. <laughs> here, let me show you how I learned. Hold your hands up in the air. Now bring them down in front of your face. See that? Hey, old. I'm Norman. I'm a really normal guy. I just kind of show up with a friendly face in the background. And sometimes I get some lines to recite too. Let me show you. Do you let it get you down? Whoa! Until you found the time. 
<laughs> that was a great one. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Let me do another. Uh, here's through. Oh, no. <clears throat> Yay! I love that one. <laughs> the longer you keep me around, the more help I'll be. <laughs> okay, up the stairs. Oh, he was tough too. Oh my god! Oh, and I knocked him way over there! Crap! Alright, there's onion. Oh, I can't. I gotta do mushroom. Mushroom was upstairs. Okay, let's go do onion. So three are in the right spot. That was onion and there's nothing in it. Oh, we must have already done it. Okay. So we've done onion, we've done mushroom, we've done shark. We need to go do coconut. Alright, we need to do pizza as well, but we haven't actually found pizza. was mushroom and then coconut's gonna be wait hold on I eat the channels that you never watch one by one people bring to my jaw you need a press square door Great. You have no idea how many friends are in here. <laughs> and there we go. Oh, it had health inside. Okay, that leads me down. I think that's where I went last time. Let's check out what's in the square door. Now that we have the square key. How did you get in here? I taped you up. I taped you up, Norman. Ah. Don't. Ah! That's Norman. Gotta get the block. Got the block. Stupid puppet. I don't understand. I taped him up. How is he there? Right. 
that one? I thought we did that one. Well, maybe the one we did was pizza. Alright, there's P. Yes! Duct tape! Oh, and I missed that last time. That's the guy I want to get. Oh, can I reach him? He fell into a spot that I can't reach. So I can't tape him up. Crap. Well, I'll tape her up. Okay, well, now I need to go switch the thing to, um, shark. Wait, this is where the- Oh, yes! Oh, man. Oh, but I can't go back that way now. Smart, I eat everyone else's food. And when I'm in a hurry, I. If you stop to think about it, I think the letters are going. We can teach them! We can teach them! She's chasing me! Aha! What is that? Glasses! <laughs> Glasses with some plastic eyeballs on the back. Okay. All right, well, we need to find the pizza box. It's the last one that we haven't done yet. See why I wanted to tie him up. He's nasty. Well, I called Liliana, but my mom called her Liliana. And there's Liliana. Liliana. And Liliana, 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 Liliana. Okay. Well, it's set to pizza, so when we find it, it'll be open. Now, I want to go save. Drive me crazy. Uh, oh, maybe I can uh, talk to my my echo. Hello. Oh, 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 hey there. It's it's uh, nice to meet you. Where was the save point? It was in here. Oh, it's upstairs. Lunch is my favorite meal of the day. I always eat the food that most represents how I'm viewing at lunch. What sort of things do I eat? 
Julian Z says Ox, maybe the glasses can go on one of the busts in the office. That's a good idea. <clears throat> um, all right, so we've got a bunch of letters that we need to go set out. And then we got to solve this letter puzzle. We still need the diamond key, and we can set the glasses on the bust hey there, in the kids. office. I live in your TV set. That's right. Why are they all right there? Alright, I'm just gonna go to the bust and we can do the letters later. Because maybe when I come back there will be fewer of them standing outside. I need more duct tape. Well, it's night now. Ooh, what's that? It's time to fix? All right, so the place changes at night. Cool, well, let's check out the uh, bust. Let's see if the glasses can go on one of the busts. Nope. Oh, man. All right, new cigar time. Secret entrance. Shh. Looks like a crank could go here. Well, um, yeah, we still haven't found a crank. All right, well, uh, the only thing we can do now is play, place the remaining letters that we found on that puzzle in the middle of the town square. <sighs> Hopefully there won't be too many people in our way this time. Up, they're standing right in front of it. Of course they are. Huge waste of ammo. Favorite new pair of socks. I got it in the mail. Letter from a dear old friend. I got it in the mail. That's all of them. The world has to offer. Well, that one disappeared in my house. I had skunk cabbage in the mail. My neighbor stuffed into a box and shipped it to my house. In the mail. 
A stockpile of greasy hamburgers ne I cooked in my vacation Neighbor, home. neighbor. Come on. There we go. Say with me. It came from Florida in the mail. Letter. <laughs> letter. Examine. A letter that came out of the letter machine. Okay. Well, what does it say? Sleeping can be the best part of your day. I always start by getting from ready Norman for to Liliana. Details on. Want to be warm and comfy all night. Next, I go to the bathroom and grab my toothbrush. You can put any of your favorite condiments on your toothbrush. I okay, so do we give the letter to Liliana? Is that what we do? Every single part of the the bird is right by Liliana's body, though. Wait, which one was Liliana? Did we tape up Liliana inside? I think we might have. That's not Liliana. To the she was then talking about to her face. Liliana. Then All right, well then maybe we just need to find a mailbox. And of course they're back. They did not last long. Where would we find a mailbox? There's a mailbox. This unlocks a different part of the studio. A crank! We found the crank! <laughs> so we can go outside now and go to the party. Yay! Now do I waste my token to save now? Not really, I don't think it's time. Let's go. Lunch is my favorite. Run for it! Make a run for it! C one two three Ray Oh whoops Okay uh door over there door down there big door over there That door is locked from the other side These paths are all blocked to us This says Ray's keys Ray's fixins Scene. Oh dear, oh my. You seem to be stranded in the basement. How do I get out of here, Ricky? Oh, having a clue. Never come down here myself. Why? What's got your overalls in a knot? I'm trying to get to the roof. The roof? <laughs> What's so interesting about the roof? Down here's much more intriguingly musty. Unrelated. How do you feel about blood force head trauma? What is it this time? <laughs> well, Ray, of course. He's the best sort of monster janitor thing. But he's a little obsessed with uh, organic maintenance. Tends to pop out of pipes and clobber people with his wrench. Great. Are all of you puppets crazy? <laughs> well, Ray has always been a little grouchy, even before the shutdown. That's why they moved him down here. Only way out is by elevator, and he can't figure out how to use the buttons. Elevator. 
Got it. Oh, silly me. I forgot about the elevators. Really, Gordon, I wouldn't bother. The cables are probably rusted. I don't think they even run anymore. I'll take my chances. Wow, you're so courageous and stuff. Look, I gotta go wash my hair. Okay, so don't go near the pipes. Stupid. Duct tape. Magazine. All right. Well, that's a big pipe. There's a door over there. War is over. <clears throat> the City Tribune, Friday, February 4th, 1972. War is over. After 20 years of fighting, the city government has finally declared a complete withdrawal of troops from the northern continent. Called the War of Horrors, the conflict, which mainly involved guerrilla confrontations in the rainforest, resulted in almost 100,000 casualties. Unlike previous homecomings, veterans returning to the city's main docks were booed and hissed, reflecting the negative attitude of many adults towards those who volunteered to serve in the war, hoping to protect their home, but in the eyes of the public, helping to perpetuate those horrors. How do you say Vietnam War without actually saying Vietnam War? The Northern War has also been called the first war fought in the living room due to the televised newsreels that kept civilians at home up to date with events overseas. They're all back here. They can't just stay in the town where I left them. All right, two doors. Um, oh man, this is a maze. Hey! We found a save room. Oh! The novelist! Yes! Okay, so it's, uh... Let's get else. writing. Press 3 to swap to the novelist. Proceed to continue. Oh, yeah. Alright, the magazine shooter, the wrench, and the novelist. <laughs> Alright, uh, cool. I think I want to save my shotgun shells, though. Studio rules... <clears throat> Pardon me, studio rules. One, be friendly to your neighbors. Two, be quiet on set during filming. When the red light is on, it's a hot set. It is tricky enough to quiet the neighbors. Guests are not permitted during filming unless previously allowed by production. All visitors must sign our blanket MFNDA. Neighbors are to be kept only in designated areas and not permitted access to heavy machinery unless explicitly required by the script. <clears throat> Their safety is our liability. Avoid equipment you are unfamiliar with. No swearing around the neighbors. Our felt friends are highly suggestive. This is a set of rules for behavior around the puppets. Cables, wires, and cords are to be taped down at two feet intervals. Stepping or standing on cables can cause long-term damage. Dangerous materials such as scissors, tape, and toxic products, paint thinner, loony gun, etc., are to be 
loony glue, etc., are to be kept on high shelves out of reach of the neighbors. They have longer arms than you think. <laughs> be mindful of custodial staff. It's their job to empty the trash from the bins. It's not their job to pick up your litter. It is their job to polish the floors. It is not their job to clean up mud from muddy boots. Generally, keep the studio in the same condition as found. Your future self will appreciate it if you return for the next production. So wait, in this universe, are the puppets like real entities and not puppets? Are they prone to suggestion? What, you, what even this, does that mean? Cool guy, Nikola Tesla. Yes! Oh, finally, I'm slowly but surely taping up all the neighbors. Okay, I thought this was a safe spot, but it's not. It's just a place to get the gun, which means I need to save as soon as possible. It's locked from the other side. Okay, we got the gun. We've got more tape. Let's take out one of the neighbors. Got two tape. Cool. That's two more taken care of. How many more are there? I think I got most of them, didn't I? All right, we got a door down there. Did something move in the shadows? What? That is, something did move in the shadows. What is that? What? It, what is that? Okay, we got a door there. Chained door here. Okay. Chain over the handle. So we've got one place we can go. Anything? No. Shoes. I'm guessing each of these lockers belongs to one of the neighbors. Oh, can I read this? We fixed it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff crossed out here. What does that mean? We're going to fix it. George and Ricky is are going to the workshop. Do you have an a uh, hammer? We ate a snack and then fixed the toy. I replaced all his tires, then cleaned their car. The wheel is broken. When the kids came to the shop, they began their work. I dropped the box of nails on the floor. Liliana dresses very fancy. I want to go home. The gears are made of weak strips of metal. How many nails are you holding? Ray is your friend. She won't do anything about the light switch. The janitor's closet has a buddy in the ceiling. At what time is Goblet coming to visit the offices? The factory floor doesn't have a bottom. Dog is a very good dog. Leonard is leaving for blah, 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 blah. All right, so if we find the janitor closet, do we look up? It's a mouse, says Alt Grendel. It looked too big to be a mouse. Duct tape! Oh, yes, we hit the jackpot on duct tape. But we got to get out of here first. All right, well, I got another thing to heal myself with, so let's use it. Oh, as soon as I walk by, he's going to grab me, isn't he? Okay. Metal piece.
Looks like it came off a plug. Ain't gonna do anything by itself. Have we found the receptacle for this yet? locked and I don't have the key. Come on! It, it, it said it right there. There's something in the ceiling in the janitor's closet. But wait, this isn't the janitor's closet. This is the locker room. Oh, that was just brutal. Alright, so we need to find a key for that. And, uh, okay, well, we've got a key to some sort of metal device. Let's see if we can figure it out. There's the elevator. The device I got must repair the elevator. But how do I get up there? Okay. Maybe I missed something in this room. Maybe I missed something where I can put this into, because if not... All right, here's this room. We actually couldn't save here. That's where we found the shotgun. There was nothing else in these cabinets, right? I think I got them all. Yeah. Uh, it's being thorough. The Mystic Maze. I wonder if that's going to become important later. This must be the janitor's office. So something in the ceiling here? Something in the ceiling in the janitor's office? All right, well, um, can't interact with anything in here, so... Locked from the other side. Okay. We disabled the two guys in the other room. We found the elevator, but it's on an upper platform. We can't get there because there's no staircase. Music! Music! The only other door in this room has a diamond on it. crumpled up in this corner. Right. Well, I guess we go to the big uh, door over there now. This is the one we avoided. Wait, can we do this one yet? No. Okay. Ray. I disabled you with tape! Hey there. Next, I go to the it's, it's nice to meet you! Norman, I, I disabled him with tape! Okay, I'm calling shenanigans. They introduce a mechanic where I can tape up these guys and it doesn't actually tape them up. You're right, it is a mouse. Okay, well then what's the point? What's the point of using the tape if it doesn't bind him up permanently? Have I bound her? I know I bound him. 
There are multiples of each puppet, says Axon Media Los Angeles. Oh. Okay. All right, well, I guess I used it then. Punch card memo. To all personnel, due to the construction of the new stages, this blast door has been locked using a punch card combination. Please insert the appropriate punch cards into the three terminals to open the door. In the event that you have lost your punch cards, this machine can be used to print replacements. Okay. Ah. The plugs seem incomplete. Uh, looks like it needs power. Uh. Okay, so restore power. Danger, this machine is remotely controlled and may start without warning. Okay, so three dashes on the 12. Twelve. 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 Oh? What? Seven. <laughs> twelve seven or seven twelve? Right. This has nine, but it's been crossed out to say ten. Twelve, 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 and seven? Okay, I need to make some room. West basement. Oh! Square two, square plus two, triangle minus one, zero plus six. I wish I could zoom in, this is really hard to see. We've cleared over half of it, but there's still a bunch of stuff, including a boat. Okay, so square plus two, triangle, minus one, circle plus six. Let's make some room. I mean, everything is so big. I'm gonna move the shotgun uh, and use it as a last resort because it's so huge. I've got a lot of tokens. I'm gonna move them. Just keep one stack with me. I've got a Choco Bar. I'm assuming that heals my life. But I also have one of these health laxes. I've got two of them and two Choco Bars. So let's stash that Choco Bar, stash that Choco Bar, stash one of those. The rest of these are all keys, I think. Okay. 
Okay. Let's save. Plus two, minus one, plus six. Plus two, minus one, plus six. Twelve, twelve, seven, twelve, three, ten, but then a ten written over a nine. This is so annoying. The plate in the briefcase, yeah, I know. I've got one in my inventory, but it's not allowing me to use it. Try to insert. The plug seems incomplete. So I can't actually, I can't actually use this item, which clearly is the piece that fits into there. I mean, that clearly goes there, but I can't do anything with it, so. Right, I don't know what to do here, so I'm gonna leave. Match the clocks to the markings. I can't change the clocks. So that says three. I can't actually change the clocks. That says 10. Yeah, I can't I can't change anything on the clocks. This is not a very intuitive puzzle. That dude, that one dude, MK2, a member for 22 months under Silver Rock, says, Wow, didn't know you were live at 12 at night. Anyway, hi. Hey, there's that dude, MK. Hey, who's there? Uh-oh. Bonk. Oh, I should have the shotgun for this. Episode script. Ugh. We gotta read this while he's bonking. Interior, Ray's workshop, day. As Stevie and Ricky enter, Ray's workshop is overflowing with enormous piles of sewage. Stevie. Ray, where are you? Ray emerges from behind a large pile of sludge, slowly, eyes downcast. Ricky. Ray, what gives? Everyone's sinks are overflowing. All the drains are clogged up with junk. Ray growls half-heartedly. Stevie. I see. Someone made fun of your plumbing, and now you're too embarrassed to keep on working. Ray whimpers and nods. A pipe rattles and groans, spewing more gunk into the growing pile. Ricky, 
Ray, if we don't get this cleared up soon, isn't the sewer going to blow up and destroy the entire city? Stevie, Ray, sometimes people make fun of us even when we're doing the right thing. That's just how people are. But you can't let them tell you how to be friendly. What was that? <laughs> well, he was working on the pipes. It's not complete. Great, I gotta turn my back to this guy. In order to complete it, I gotta turn my back to him. <laughs> Boy, there do I is. have just a thing for you. <laughs> there it is. Oh, shoot. It's time for, uh, what does Norman notice? Well, let's see here. Uh, what does Norman notice? Uh, ah, Norman notices Leonard. Well, I can't believe you noticed me. Oh, I notice all sorts of things. Here, let's play again. Now, I notice uh, cameras, lights, producers, children. Notice the children! Norman has noticed! Norman has noticed! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Bring Right out! Well, I wasted a bunch of ammo on that. Yeah, I should have used the shotgun there, but I didn't have it with me. Sometimes it's little pieces of papers. Sometimes it's big boxes. No matter what, I always open it immediately. Yeah, I see you. A letter from a dear old friend. I got it in the mail. And a sort in of a Okay, now, finally. All right. A punch card from the boiler room machine. So this is going to be wrong. Okay, so I need to make three. I get it now. So I need to arrive at three. So to get to three, I can do... So a square is plus two. A circle is plus... is minus. The circle is minus. What was the circle minus? Minus one. So to get to three, two squares and one triangle.
Okay. Now, we need to get to 10. And we're currently at 12. So, we could do... If we do three triangles, that's going to get us to nine. If we do two two uh, circles, it's going to get us all the way back here. And then one triangle, that's going to get us to 11. <sighs> okay, so we could do... If we do triangle, that goes to 11. And if we do six, it's gonna go to five. If we do another six, well, we can only do three though. Oh, is it minus two? Oh, it's minus two, I thought it was minus one. So to get to 10, we can just do but if we do that, then we go we go beyond it. Okay, so two circles and one triangle, I think. Uh, let me double check. Just I thought it was minus one. It is minus one. It's minus one. So if I did two circles to go all the way back to 12 and then one triangle to bring it back one, it's going to get me to 11. But I got to get to 10. It's on 12 now. I got to get to 10. I could do two triangles. That'll get me to 10. But I still have to fill up the last slot. Circle, square, square. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I was, I thought we had to go backwards. I was trying to get the subtraction in there. Whatever. Ten. Okay. Uh, now, uh, this is confusing because seven is circled. Nine is on there. But then 9 is crossed out with a 10. So is that telling me there's a 10 on top of it? Or is it just crossed out? It should have been scribbled. Instead, they used a Roman numeral to cross out a Roman numeral. All right, fine. We're going to go 7. Square, square, triangle. Right? Oh no, that's four. Shoot, let me use it. Six, seven, eight, seven. Yes, yay, yay. deep this goes. I'm starting to get amnesia bunker vibes. <laughs> so 
sleeping can be the best part of your day. I always start by getting ready for bed. First, I get my PJs on so I can be warm and comfy all night. Next, I'm a friend! 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 I'm Pathway, door. A, B, C, one, two, three. Okay, I came from there. Did I? No, I came from here. I don't want to open any doors because all these guys are going to respawn and I'm going to have to do this all over again. Well, let me explore what's here first and then I'll start exploring doors because I want to limit the amount of times I have to kill them all. Because I'm out of tape. Okay, so that's the elevator. There's no power. Let's try door number one. It's like the third one I've found that I can't open. Because I don't have the key. Uh, oh. Is that a boat? Drive the boat? Okay, let me finish exploring this first. Down. This is just huge. This is huge. Way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I like the boot randomly. It's sat there. I can't, can't put it in there. It's chained. Don't you jump out of a pipe? Triangle. I still don't have the triangle key. I've got the circle, I've got the square, and I don't have the triangle or the diamond. Okay. Okay. Letter to the editor, the City Tribune, Tuesday, June 17th, 1975. As the mother of a four-year-old who was devoted to my friendly neighborhood, I am frightened by the tone of the morals on that show. Just yesterday, one of the characters said, you should always think of others before yourself, even when it's uncomfortable. But what if somebody takes advantage of you for doing that? What if doing what's uncomfortable ends up exposing you to hurt and danger? 
Is it really a good idea to teach children to be so reckless with their own well-being? <coughs> I want my daughter to live the fullest life she can, so I don't want some TV producer filling her head with dangerous, self-sabotaging ideas. I think from now on, she'll watch something else. I mean, yeah, that's pretty awful. You should always think of others before yourself, even when it's uncomfortable. That's not something you want to be teaching kids. Yikes. All right, well, we could heal and save, check out the inventory. I mean, I've got a shotgun. I kind of want to use it. <laughs> Tell you what, let's, um, let's take the shotgun and one stack of ammo. Now this gives me room for quite a few things. Okay, so, still can't get in there. There was a boat behind us. Hey. All right. Still can't get in there. How many of those have I found? All right, there's a door over there. What's, what's in here? Wait, we've been here. Haven't we been here? Wait, maybe we haven't been here. Dude, chill out! Don't freaking do that to me, man. Strange kind of breaker box. Ooh, ooh, key! Yes! Breaker note to everyone. Someone keeps taking the breakers that you use to open these doors. So I put them in those lock boxes around the basement. Here's a ma map of where they are in case you need you need through. Janet or Hank, it's Ray. Oh, uh, we gotta backtrack. <laughs> we gotta backtrack and get all the freaking keys. Oh man. Well, I mean, here's one. What's that? Oh, this goes in the third slot. Okay, let's go do that now. Okay. Now, what is this? Why did I hear a knock? Locked with an electrical latch. Locked with an electrical latch as well. Why is this map so small? There's the boat. We saw that boat, right? And I'm there. There's another triangle door. All right, let's go back the way we came. See if we can find more of those lock boxes. Did we go down here? We didn't. Well, now we know. Tape? Tape? Oh, I can't tape it. 
now we know um, what was on this side. We've done a full loop. So I'm thinking the best way to go about this is... The yellow axes are the boxes. There was one in the room that I just came from. There's one that we passed up that way to the north. But then there's also two in the west basement. I'm right there. We came from here. To go up here, we'll get one, but then we'll have to come back out and zone out, which is gonna cause them all to spawn again, which I don't wanna do. So let's go to the west base, well, we're gonna do that anyway. But then we would have to come back out to go to the west basement. All right, let's go to the west basement first, and then find the ones here. Then we'll come back, these guys will respawn, but maybe we can race in here without having to waste ammo on all of them. We come through here, we immediately find one. Then we gotta navigate through here. There's stage two. Did we not go into stage two? I guess we didn't explore stage two. Let's explore stage two. Oh, the boat navigates directly between them so that we never have to cause them to respawn. Oh wait, yeah, that boat goes that way and probably ends up here. All right, so we just take the boat. Oh, but this door is locked. So we have to go through this. Oh, that's gonna unlock the door. All right. Okay, one is in the room directly in front of us. This is the spade. It goes on the last one. Spade goes on the last one. Okay, so we just gotta remember spade to the far right. Then, uh, let's go explore stage two. This is the save room. I don't want to do this again, but I also don't want to pay. All right, fine. All right, that's where we came from. That leads to the cave. That's the save room. Hey, y'all. I'm Norman. I'm a really normal guy. I just kind of uh, show up to be a friendly face in the background. Uh, sometimes I get some lines to recite, too. All right, we missed something in the stage. If we were there, did we go here? Yeah, we did. This is where we met the guy. All right, what are we missing here? It's red, which means we have failed to loot something.
mean, there's a ducky back there, but it's being hidden by a... Oh, my gosh. Hello. I didn't realize these were cabinets. Yes. And that clears it. Hooray. Okay, so the next I box is going to be all the way over here into the office space. Get every single part of your mouth covered and scrub the with the skin on your mouth. God. The backtracking is so annoying. All right, left. And then left. And that's a locked door. And then first room. Okay. All right, diamond is second, spade is last. That clears the room. All right, that's everything over here. The other one is gonna be in the east basement. But there's still something in this big room that I just came from. Did I miss? <laughs> Alright, that's still chained. And that leads to a staircase that gets behind and up there. Oh. That's what it is. I couldn't get up there. That's why it's still red. So then what about that? That's blue, blue. So we just need to go back. Because that's a diamond door. want to get eaten by him just to see what happens, but now I'm not that curious. Okay, so if we take the first right, maybe we don't have to waste ammunition on all of them. Can I sneak around to the right? Sometimes we would swap our arms, and we would swap our legs. One by one, each piece was swapped, and then we were back to normal. Oh, oh. <laughs> Let's be excellent! Let's be excellent! Let's be excellent! Let's be excellent! 
crap, 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 crap. Whoops. That guy just eats up all my ammo. I just, oh! Oh, man, that's hurt. Ah, so that's what happens if we get eaten by him. Now we know. Okay, it's on the wall to the left. There it is. Clubs. And that's everything. All right, so now we just need to go back. Let's go take the boat so that we can unlock the, the door on the other side. So that we can save ourselves some time later if we ever have to come back. Mm. Yeah. Duct tape, yes! A heel fount. Is that it for this room? It is. Let's unlock the door. Here we go. Well, that would have made it a lot faster. And we would have saved a lot of ammunition had we unlocked that door earlier when we first found it. the boat. That's not where I wanted to go. Right? Yeah. Scythian Shikan gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Congratulations to Patrick, David, Crystal, Gu, and Mike. Thank you so much, so much Scythian. And congratulations, everyone. All right, so we got a bunch of guys in here. There's a diamond door to the right, so we can't get up there. Um, and we can't go through this way because there's a guy blocking us. But if we can... Oh, but I hear two voices. That guy takes a lot of rounds, too. That guy takes four. This guy... Takes a shotgun. And he's the one we're gonna tip up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Amelia the Great says, Hi Ox, been a while. I'm glad I caught one of your live streams. I hope you're doing well. What is this game? Fallout with puppets? Joking, lol, have fun. Thank you, Amelia the Great. It's good to see you. It's not Fallout <laughs> with puppets. All right, um... We've got to go straight through this door and it's on the opposite end of this wall. All right. 
Right, we got them all. We just have to deposit them now. Okay. Right hand door unlocked. Okay. What about the other door? Ooh. What is. Oh, yes. Yes. Hey, chain cutters. <laughs> These guys are creepy. Okay, what's this? Nice. Boat! Which boat is this? It's a different boat. Where does this boat lead? Okay, but hold on. Before we take the boat, we need to finish the puzzle in the last room because we unlocked the right door, but there was another door. And now that we've got the chain cutters, there was another door down here that we can unlock. This one is still locked with electrical. Okay, but we followed the instructions, so now what? Clover, diamond, heart, and spade. These are the only instructions we got. So how do we unlock the other door? <laughs> well, I can use a health potion. But I'm going to need two slots to fill it up, won't I? Wait, is there a box in this room? There was a box recently, right? That just goes out there. So much ammunition. And that's okay, I'm not gonna complain. I've got 26 there, 11 there, 11 there. Let's uh, stash these. Wait, these are checked. That means I've, I'm done with them. If it's anything like Resident Evil. Okay. Yes. How did I miss that earlier? Alright, so we got a process of elimination this.
there's no way we're going to be able to process of elimination this. Reverse the original order, maybe? Nope. Amalia the Great says, sorry I missed your other live streams. I've just been so busy getting my house ready to sell, but I always make sure I go watch what I missed. Thank you, Amalia the Great. I appreciate it. Good luck with selling your house. Right, I'm not going to spend time trying to, to process of elimina elimination that. Okay, well, this is the only room that we don't have red here, which means let's go take that boat and see where it goes. back here. This room was chained to us. No, that was a diamond room. Well, then what was it that had the chain? I think it was at the end of this hall to the office basement. That's right. dead when I saw him saw him earlier. Right, that's the diamond door. There's the chain door. Secret! Cheat tape! A cheat unlocked. Okay, what do I do with all these cheats? <laughs> second cheat tape that I've found, but I don't know what cheat I'm unlocking. This must be the elevator Ricky was talking about. Sinchferno says that cheats are for other playthroughs. Ah. Hey. Where are we now? Oh. Music studio. It's got a triangle on top. Is that where I'm going to find the triangle key? 
TV studio. It's got a diamond on top. That must be where I'll find the diamond key. MFN Studios. Great. Website. It's starting again. What's starting again? Oh, that. The interview. It's not showing me where I am on the map. All visitors must check in. I need to save. I gotta go. On the War, the City Tribune, Monday, March 19th, 1979. On the War, a reflection. Last month marked seven years since the end of the war, so it seems like a good time to reflect on the impact it has had on our lives. I think, across the whole city, the war has left us feeling troubled. We were called to service for the sake of righteousness, love for one city, and protecting others, but in the end we found that those calls were just noble lies, and behind them, the horror of reality thwarted our starry-eyed ideals. We left home as heroes, <clears throat> and came home as murderers. Wow, and who knew this game was going to be packed full with reflections on the Vietnam War? But this tension leads to a question. Why should we care about right and wrong, or friendliness, as the children's show puts it? Following such things can have a terrible cost. The only reason would be if there was something over, some overarching purpose, some guiding goodness to our wanderings in the world. But that is exactly what an injustice like the war calls into question. Perhaps it is time to put aside the, those old ideals. Perhaps it is time to look for other sources of hope. Perhaps the wise man is the one who lives for himself. Another elevator. It's not working. Let's cross the hall. What are those? I don't recognize that one. Or those. <laughs> right, we'll be back. This leads to the office, huh? Hold on, I don't want to go outside and get locked out and then not be able to get the other keys that I need. What is all this? This is huge. Are they gonna wake up? The punctuator, or the punctuation. What is the punctuation? Press four to swap to the punctuation. Is it a landmine? Okay, I don't got time for this. I gotta go save. My broadcast is over. We'll have to come back and check out the punctuation later. Just on the off chance that what we need is right on the other side of one of these doors. Oh, it's locked. Of course it is. It's going to need the right key. 
which we don't have. Right, the save room was... Sometimes we would swap our arms, then we would swap Pretty far away. One by one, each piece would swap, and then we were back to normal. <laughs> That's what friends are for. They give you new fingers to use. And it was which one? Was it th th that's to the east basement? That's to the stage. Which one was the save room? I think it was this one. And there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, what a quirky and interesting game. <laughs> Having a great time with it. Uh, thanks for joining me, everybody, for Scotch and Smoke Rings. We'll pick up right here where we leave off next time. Same Ox channel, same Ox time, 7 o'clock Thursday evening for more of My Friendly Neighborhood. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Uh, for the rest of this week, I'm going to be working hard on my next lore video. Hope to have it done soon. Um, but definitely not by this weekend. I'm still in the capturing footage stage. Then I'm going to be producing the intro video, and then I can get to work on the first episode in my next series. So stay tuned for that. Thanks a bunch for coming, everybody. And uh, for the next live stream, I'll see you Monday for more Diablo 4. We beat the final boss, but we still have a bit more to wrap up the game. That's what we're going to tackle then. Have a wonderful Thursday. See you all later. Bye-bye.